Will we see another surprise at the 101 tonight? Can a former FFPC main event overall champion add another title to his resume? And who will be the final shock pick of the 2019 FFPC Pros vs. Joes competition? Follow along with the live draft board tonight and listen to our analysis as we call the action from the 2019 FFPC Pros vs. Joes Throw the Sam Towel League Number 6 to see who's going to win a 2020 FFPC main event team. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Falkman. Stick around. Your high stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Hey, everybody. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. With the master rhyme, that's the lead behind the video rapper. You know the top rhyme. Thank you so much, Rob. Greetings and salutations, all of you Balkaholic fingers, Zach and Addicts. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co-host is the patron saint of fantasy football. He is the Dizzle. He is Dave Gerzak. Tonight we have the final one, the last, the ultimate episode of six extra special ones we brought to you so far in 2019. It's the Pros versus Joe's Throw the Damn Towel League number six draft tonight, and we will be covering it for you for the next one hour and 58 minutes. Follow the live draft board at the link we posted on the FFPC, HSFF Hour, and my uh, Twitter and Facebook uh, uh, page account. Uh, you can also get it in the Blog Talk Radio chat room, and it's posted on the FFPC message board as well. Shout out to the chat room right now. Post any questions you might have in there. Uh, you can also connect with us on Twitter at HSFF Hour, at Eric Balkman, at David Gerzak. Facebook.com slash HSFF Hour is where to get a hold of us. If you want to give us a call, feel free to do so. The number is 347-426-3682. Once again, that is 347-GAME-OBA. You can also email the show at the inbox, football at gmail.com. If you have any questions for us, get them to us as soon as you can. Our producer and mutual friend Rob, our audio engineer and best friend Bryce, will get to those uh, questions, tweets, and emails throughout the show tonight, and we'll uh, do our best to answer those as we move through two hours of live draft coverage. As a reminder, we have a ton of action over at MyFFPC.com, including best ball leagues, classic leagues, dynasty leagues, super flex leagues, all the way from $35 entry fees to $5,000 entry, uh, entry fees. The FFPC does indeed have a league for every budget. If you are looking at getting in to the FFPC main event and its $3.1 million prize pool and its $500,000 grand prize, as a reminder, if you get your team paid off by August 13th, you will get your draft slot on August 15th. That is roughly a little bit more than a week before main event drafts start. So definitely check that out. Make sure you're getting those uh, teams uh, squared away so you can properly plan and uh, plot your way to a half million bucks. We are in the final episode of the Pros vs. Joes tonight. I want to give you the lineup here as far as who's participating. Uh, it is an FFPC Joe at number one tonight, Dave Sherman picking first, followed by Fantasy Insiders and Roto-Grinders Josh Hornsby at Fantasy ADHD on Twitter. Chad Schroeder, the inaugural champ of the FFPC main event way back in, uh, what was that, Dave? Was that uh, 2008? Yeah, 2008. The economy was cratering at the time. Right? right, and it wasn't for Chad Schroeder who cashed a, you know, how, how far have we gone? It was, it was a massive... 75000 Yeah, grand prize, and now it's up to 500000 not, not, not as much as we would have loved to have given you at the time. Uh, I think he's good with it. Mike Nazarek. Uh, the w Corp was still around. That for, was the problem. Right, exactly. FFMastermind.com's Mike Nazarek hitting cleanup tonight, followed by the FFPC Joe Tandem of Ray Cowart and Tyson Yarbrough. Bob Harris from Football Diehards is drafting sixth. Chris Carlson, the tickler. 
drafting seventh night. God, what a great team name. That's good. From the fantasy footballers, it's Rob Waziak at eighth, uh, followed by the FFPC Joe duo of Timothy Skorecki and Richard Clement. Darren Armani, the godfather of the pros versus Joe's competition from fantasymojo.com. All the ADP I referenced tonight will be because of him. Uh, he is drafting 10th, Rich Rissinger and Lou Ditta at 11th. And then fantasydata.com's Eric Moody drafting 12th tonight. Um, let's uh, get through the first round, and then I want to hit up the phone lines right away here, Dave, as, as these guys are. Like, this is so much better than this draft and the one before it. That early yeah, I, I, I hope so. It. I hope so. Warp speed tonight. As I take you through the first round, no surprise that Dave Sherman goes with Christian McCaffrey, number one. But here's the David Johnson love again tonight from Josh Hornsby at the 102. He takes DJ one pick later than when he went last night to Todd Burroughs uh, at the 101. He goes at the 102 tonight. Saquon Barkley to Chad Schroeder, followed by Alvin Kamara to Mike Nazarick. DeAndre Hopkins, before Travis Kelsey tonight, Cowart and Yarborough take DeAndre Hopkins as the first receiver off the board. Uh, Travis Kelsey to Bob Harris from Football Diehards. Ezekiel Elliott falls oh, all, right. all the way to the 107 to tonight because I think it's funny. Ezekiel Elliott to the 107 for uh, Chris Carlson. Tyree Kill all the way up to the 108 tonight. Rob Waziak from the Fantasy Footballers takes Tyree Kill as the number two receiver off the board, and that begins a run uh, of receivers that uh, goes through the end of the first round. Devontae Adams uh, goes off the board to uh, Skorecki and Clement here at 109. Julio Jones is uh, Darren Armani's first pick at the 110, followed by Odell Beckham to Rissinger and Ditta, and then Juju Smith-Schuster to Eric Moody, fantasydata.com, to round things out here in the first round. All right, uh, I kept him on hold long enough. Let's go to the uh, 618 for some real-time analysis and uh, get his thoughts on how the draft is going tonight. You're on the air on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour with Dave and Balky. Who is this? It's Bob Harris. Bob Harris from Football Diehard. Well, always calls in I, I always appreciate that. Bob is a longtime veteran of this competition and uh, no doubt getting off to a nice little start here tonight, Bob, as, as you take the first tight end off the board. And Travis Kelsey, were you surprised that he was still there? A uh, little bit surprised he was still there and a little bit horrified that I took him over Ezekiel Elliott. But, you know, in the premium scoring, the tight end, you know, beyond, it goes beyond that, though. I mean, you know, when you think about it, Travis Kelsey in a regular point for receptive scoring for more than, what, all but eight wide receivers and all but five running backs last year and just regular PPR. So I think it's a fine play in this season passing up on Elliott. You know, might I regret that at some point? Yes, but I don't think so. So I want to ask you about that, too, because this is the latest of all the pros versus Joe's drafts we've done so far. This is the latest that we've seen Elliott go. And had you taken Elliott at the 106, that still would have been the latest that we've seen Elliott go. How concerned are you about this holdout, man? Not that concerned for him. Look, he doesn't have a lot of options. He doesn't have a ton of leverage. His leverage is right now. I mean, if he doesn't report by August 6th, you know, he loses his accrued year. My guess is this is just to let them know he's serious about wanting a new new deal if they can get a contract, or at least get the talks on track. My guess is he shows up. Uh, you know, Jerry Jones is talking kind of tough. I saw the speculation today if the Cowboys really wanted to show they were being tough, trade for Adrian Peterson because obviously signing Alfred Morris is not that great a sign. But I'm just pretty confident in him. Melvin Gordon is the one that, that is of more concern. He looks like he could realistically hold out, you know, into, into week 10 at least and come back and get his accrued gear. So, uh, there are some interesting running backs left. I just went with Nick Chubb, a guy who I think is phenomenal. I know a lot of people have dialed back out of concerns about three months. I'm not one of those people. So I'm good with this. I love Joe Mixon until the offensive line woes hit. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm feeling like uh, feeling pretty comfortable with Chubb at this point. Bob Harris, host at, uh, over at Sirius XM Fantasy. You can check out his work at uh, F uh, FF Diehards. He's also uh, the FSWA Hall of Famer uh, joining the broadcast tonight. Let me ask you a little bit about this Cleveland backfield situation as you just invested a second-round pick in Nick Chubb. I don't want you to reveal your draft strategy entirely here tonight, Bob, but are you more likely in this best ball format to make sure you get Kareem Hunt later, make sure you get Duke Johnson later, or not target either one of those guys going forward? I mean, this, look, in a draft this deep, it's likely I'll have more Cleveland running backs in this, on this. You know, I don't think it's any secret that that would be a goal. It's a matter of when more so than if. And, and I think, you know, if the price is right, I'll certainly be jumping in there because I do think this is going to be a, a pretty high-powered offense. I love what Chubb did last year. I mean, it's easy to overlook. I think 
caught up in the Baker Mayfield, you know, joy, the arrival of Odell Beckham. You know, all these things are true, but Nick Chubb was phenomenal under Freddie Kitchens uh, once he took over. Uh, a huge, big play threat. Look, I remember two years ago, Matt Waldman, you know, actually had him ranked higher, just evaluated higher than Saquon Barkley, right, in terms of ability to break capital in a number of areas, and actually ranked him higher than Barkley in terms of talent. That doesn't mean, you know, Matt thought he was going to be the better pro, just, you know, in the measurables and the things that he watched on film. He really liked them. But Nick Chubb is a guy that's easy to overlook, uh, especially with all the brighter stars in this offense, but a guy that I'm not overlooking this year. And, again, I love Joe Mixon. Until the offensive line was, I think he was the guy, another guy in the position. Look, if, if everyone is looking for the, the next Todd Gurley, if he has right blocking, Joe Mixon might be it with uh, Zach Taylor in Cincinnati. And, you know, maybe you expect that heavy workload that he got late last year. But the offensive line, we've seen it how many times, you guys? Offensive lines matter. Yeah, they do indeed, and that's something that we always look at, especially at these early-round draft picks. Bob, I'm curious, when, when you're drafting in, in these 28-round best ball formats, uh, you want guys not only with the talent, not only with the opportunity, but you want them on elite offenses, offenses that are going to score right. points. And clearly you, you've made that a priority here with Travis Kelsey. You get a piece of the Chiefs offense. Nick Chubb, you get a piece of the Browns offense in round two. Is that is that something that you that, that is a significant factor in who you draft and, and what offenses you're investing in here, at least in the early rounds? Yeah, you know, because uh, like a lot of times right now in a lot of formats, I might be looking at another running back here, perhaps a running back that's going to be getting a heavy workload in a lackluster offense. I'm not going to, you know, name names at this point, but I think you know who I'm looking at maybe. Um, but maybe not in this <laughs> format. Maybe I'm looking for somebody who might be a little more explosive or certainly at a more explosive offense, whether it's a receiver or running back. I, I think you guys nailed it. Maybe that guy that just now went, Damian Williams, would be that kind of player, you know, kind of a high upside guy at running back. Uh, but I might pivot to another position at this point, just based on what I see available. You, uh, you start off this draft with uh, tight end running back. I look in the first round, I see that there were six receivers off the board, but only three of them go here in the second round. So far as you are on deck now, two receivers are off the board. Now you are receiverless <laughs> right now as you are on deck, Bob. What can you tell us a little bit about uh, the players you're looking at here as you look to make sure. your choice at the 306? I'm looking at Adam Thielen and, and T.Y. Hilton right now. Uh, I'm dialed in on them. Uh, the Rams offense would be tempting. I know there are points where all three of those guys were playing. I think they were all wide receiver 11 cumulatively or better over the time they played together. So that is kind of tempting, right? I mean, a piece of the Rams offense is always good, but maybe I can get a cheaper piece a little later, uh, probably not too much later. But I'm looking at those two right now, and uh, it'll be one of those. Thielen first, Hilton next. All right, so Thielen, then Hilton. It will be a receiver as we wait for uh, Ray Cowart and uh, Tyson Yarbrough, the FFPC Joes, picking fifth tonight as they have DeAndre Hopkins and Todd Gurley already on their roster. We will await to see what they do here, and then uh, we'll see if Bob. Uh, oh, okay, so like Bob, Aaron you Jones did take Adam. Too, by the way. Yeah, okay. I Aaron did. Jones, I like, yes. I like, the Aaron, I, like, I like the Aaron Jones pick, but I think it's worth noting that, you know, if you look at we're once again projecting the kind of offense we're going to see, that Rams-style offense, uh, that, that we're hoping to see in, in the Packers roll out. You know, look, there's some goal line work, but what we've seen to this point, it hasn't been that, right? The, the, the red zone play goes to Aaron Rodgers in the passing attack. So until I see that, I'm a little, I'm a little leery of it. I do love Jones, love the yards per carry. If, you're a, if you attend the church of uh, yards per attempt, then uh, Aaron Jones is a great guy, and I, I happen to follow that. But uh, in this case, I'm looking for someone more explosive or someone at least more of a scoring threat. Uh, and, and I like starting out with a balanced approach when it works out that way. Well, we like starting off with the explosive approach of getting Bob Harris on right at the start of the show. We certainly appreciate that, Bob. I'm going to let you get back to it right before you leave, though. I do want to remind everybody, check out all of Bob's work at footballdiehards.com and tell the listeners when they can catch you on SiriusXM. Uh, we'll be bumping up next week to, to our regular spot, two hours a day, every Monday through Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're on the rest of this week uh, for one hour from uh, 7 to 8. But, but next week we go into full uh, preseason and regular season mode. So you'll be able to listen to me pretty near every day of the week. I'll do the pregame shows again with Jeff Manns as well. Awesome stuff. Follow him on Twitter at Football Diehard. Bob, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for chiming in tonight. And uh, enjoy all the rest of your drafts this summer, dude. 
Oh, thanks a lot. And I really appreciate you guys inviting me and letting me be part of this. It's a ton of fun. Always, Bob. No question. Thanks so much. That's Bob Harris, the Fantasy Sports Writers Association Hall of Famer, joining us tonight. Let's keep the phone calls rolling here. I wish I could be as classy as Bob Harris. Uh, he, he, is, he is ultimately yeah, classy. Like Did you see, uh, by the way, if you if you go to his Twitter right now, uh, you'll appreciate this, Dave. As, as he probably tweets nice things. Nice like me. I tweet all these you know, jerky we don't, we don't need to get into that. But at, at Football Diehard, he has a pinned Twitter, uh, a, a pinned tweet. Um, and uh, it, it is about um, all the weight that he had lost when he dedicated himself to eating right, exercising, and he's got a before and after picture on there. Nice. Inspiration to, to me, to you, anybody who's trying to lose weight, anybody who's trying to, you I'm know, not trying to lose weight right now. be the best oh, version. Well, I am. I'm trying to be the best version of yourself, and that's inspiring. At Football <laughs> Diehard. Uh, thanks so much, Bob, for calling in tonight. All right, let's keep the phone calls rolling here. At the 254, you're on the HSFF Hour with Dave and Balky. Who are we talking to now? Hey, this is uh, Victor Rogers from Richmond, Virginia. Victor, you are watching the uh, draft unfold in front of you tonight. This is the Six Pros versus Joe's draft. What's on your mind as you see this action? Um, You know, I'm doing my first uh, FFPC draft, and uh, I've been kind of trying to pay attention to what the experts are doing. I'm um, just looking and probably going to steal a couple of ideas from you guys. I wanted to share with you my first three picks and – get your two cents on what you think I should do with my fourth. I'm picking up the fourth round, if that's all right. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. So um, I, I picked uh, – actually, I'm picking number two. So my um, at 102, I went Patrick Mahomes. Then I um, went um, uh, uh, George Kittle. And then I – no, excuse me. I went Joe Mixon. And then I went George Kittle. So um, coming up – and nine picks, I'm thinking, should I, because it's a dynasty league, should I go ahead and lock down? I'm looking like at a Chris Godwin, DJ Moore kind of stack to get my wide out, or should I go ahead and get another uh, quarterback? Um, I was thinking since it was dynasty, I shouldn't fade the QB, I mean, the, the wide receivers, because I was always taught that you're supposed to go heavy on wide outs. But, um, you know, figured out ask y'all guys. I wouldn't have picked Kittle if it wasn't at .5 uh, premium. Um, but I thought him falling to 302 was a was a steal. And so it's a regular standard scoring, not super flex, just to be sure. Oh no, it's a okay. Well, let me let me re- re- rephrase that. It's a it's a super flex dynasty um, okay. half point PPR uh, tight end. Okay, super. Okay, I got you. So okay, so Mahomes makes some kills. I'm a huge fan of DJ Moore, so I always like that option. What other choices do you guys kind of have? What were you thinking otherwise? As far as quarterbacks, what quarterback would you be looking there if you don't go with those receivers? Probably Lamar Jackson. I really want Lamar Jackson or a Dak because I kind of feel like, you know, those running court those running quarterbacks uh do do damage. Plus since it's a since it's a best ball format, you know, I don't necessarily have to worry about when to put them in, you know. Sure. How many quarterbacks have gone other other than uh, Mahomes about like fifth twelve, fifteen range? Um, let me look. I think it's only about nine. Let me see. Rogers. I know, you know, Mark Jackson to be uh, for dynasty purposes, he's up there hot. Huh? Well, I'll I'll say this, Victor, and, and I'm not the biggest quarterback guy, even in, in super flex, but I, I will say if, if DJ Moore or Chris Godwin is there for you here at, at that four or five turn, I think they would both be excellent choices. I do like Lamar Jackson for what it's worth. I think for he's going to be a better fantasy quarterback than NFL running back, and if you can start him and Mahomes every week, I, I think there's a certain advantage there. I don't know if all three of those guys will be available, so this decision may be made for you. I think Prescott would be a solid choice uh, there as well, no question. If all four of them were somehow available, I think maybe, Dave, you, you go with maybe Lamar Jackson or Prescott and then try to get D.J. Moore as well. Go Moore first and then whatever quarterback's left for you at, in the fifth round. Well, just you obviously see who is available. This is the fourth pick, so see who the number one team has for its first three picks. Right. That's another option. Yeah. That's something you have to do. Does that help out, Victor? Yeah. Um, the guy I got, and I, I noticed this in another draft I did, that there, there's a guy, he keeps trading all his picks away to pick up first-round picks, and he hasn't made any picks yet, but he has like half of the first rounds next year. So, <laughs> you know, he keeps trying to trade me. For my first, but I don't, I don't get why people do that. But uh, I, don't, I, I yeah. don't think he's going to be picking. He's going to probably trade out of that pick. It, it's entirely possible. We well, we, listen. We wish you good luck in that draft. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, I hope you, uh, I hope you end up crushing it, dude. 
Oh, yeah, hey, man, I love y'all show. I listen to it all the time when I'm driving Uber, man. Y'all great. Y'all take it easy. And I hope y'all win a lot of money in championships this year. Well, thank you so right, much, Victor. Well. Appreciate that. Victor in Richmond, the Uber driver to the stars in Richmond, Virginia. Always uh, appreciate him popping on to, uh, to share with us what is going on with his drafts. And I think we helped him out there. I'd like to think we did anyway. Uh, well, we probably didn't hurt him too much. So we didn't hurt him. That's, that's a good point of looking at it. Uh, we are hurting the listeners because we've, uh, we've gone through one round of action here. Let's get back to the round two here. As Eric Moody from Fantasy Data leads off round two with Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas to Rissinger and Ditta at the 202. Le'Veon Bell falls tonight to Darren Armani with the third pick of the second round. Zach Ertz is the tight end two off the board, and he is going to, uh, uh, that is, um, excuse me, um, Discarecki and Clement. Uh, the FFPC Joe is in the nine spot tonight. Antonio Brown is the second wide receiver drafted by Rob Wasiak from the Fantasy Footballers. It is Tyree Kill and Antonio Brown. Uh, there, what, what, what's the rating on the flake scale there, Dave, with, with Tyree Kill and Antonio Brown? Or does Tyree Kill not rate on the flake scale? I don't think we've, we've, we've attacked him there. Yeah, he has so much uncertainty. He's gone from one to five, five to one and all over the place. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I'd probably put him in the three range, three, three to range, probably right about. Okay, all right, so, fair enough. Still a lot of uh, concern about him. Right. So it's a big snowdrift there with a couple of flakes there with uh, Hill and Brown with uh, Wozniak. Also, a lot of upside, too, so we'll see what happens there. Joe Mixon to Chris Carlson here at the 206, followed by Nick Chubb. You heard Bob Harris make that pick uh, live on the air from Football Diehards. Todd Gurley goes to Cowart and Yarborough here tonight at the 208. George Kittle is tight end three to Mike Nazarick from FF Mastermind. James Conner to Chad Schroeder at the 210, followed by Mike Evans to uh, Josh, uh, ADHD here at the 211. And the final pick of the second round is one Melvin Gordon, Wisconsin Badgers uh, alumnus, I believe. Uh, Melvin Gordon goes at the 212 to Dave Sherman tonight. So that's a little interesting. I think that's, I don't want to say that's the latest we've seen Gordon gone. If I uh, can pull the uh, real FFPC uh, drafters, uh, the FFPC best balls over the last three days, the latest he has gone has been the 308. On average, he is going at the 209. Uh, so that is where uh, the, the group think is falling in on that. A uh, little bit of a value there for Dave Sherman getting Melvin Gordon at the 212 tonight. Now, last night we saw George Kittle go to Peter Overzet as the tight end to uh, over Zach Ertz, that is the opposite of what we see tonight as Ertz goes before Kittle tonight, which I think is, is sort of what we've been much more accustomed to. And I'll move, move on from there as nothing else uh, really stands out to me in the second round other than things I've already talked about. Uh, let's get into the 301 here. That's Dave Sherman going running back, running back, running back as he gets carry on Johnson at the 301. Amari Cooper to Josh Hornsby here with the second pick. Uh, Chad Schroeder also going with three straight running backs. Uh, he is the second team to go running back, running back, running back tonight. As he gets Damian Williams up at 303. Nice little value there as he uh, goes Barkley, Connor, Williams to start off the draft tonight. Keenan Allen is the number one receiver drafted by Michael Nazarick. And then Aaron Jones, uh, you heard Bob Harris talk about why he liked that pick um, to uh, Cowart and Yarbrough here. Uh, Harris then going with Adam Thielen, as he said he would. Leonard Fournette is the third running back drafted by Chris Carlson. Uh, Chris Carlson is the third team tonight, uh, the third of three teams to start off their draft with three straight running backs. Evan Ingram sneaking in as the tight end for tonight to Rob Wozniak. So he goes receiver, receiver, tight end, and it is Evan Ingram, not O.J. Howard, who actually just went off the board. We'll get to that in a second. Patrick Mahomes goes way earlier tonight than he did uh, last night. I believe he was like a late fifth, mid-fifth round pick. I thought he was an early fifth. Well, early fifth, okay. Five three, five four. So he, okay, so that's not, I guess, not way earlier. He goes at the end of the third tonight. That's way earlier. That's still round and a half. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so Mahomes goes there to uh, Skorecki and Clement at the 309. Marlon Mack off the board to Darren Armani as his second running back at the 310. Devonta Freeman, uh, Rich Risinger, and Lou Ditta take him as their number one running back at the 311. And then we wrap up the round with Stephon Diggs at the 312 tonight uh, to uh, Eric Moody from FantasyData.com. Thank you, Dave. Uh, so that is your uh, wrap up. What do you make with uh, of the Evan Engram uh, over OJ Howard? I'm curious on this because we we've kind of separately talked about Engram and we've separately talked about OJ Howard. We haven't really talked about if you're making the decision between the two, which one you would rather have. Now FFPC drafters have these guys fairly close. 
uh, over the last three days with O.J. Howard going on average at the 407, Evan Ingram going on average at the 409. Dave, if you were in a tight end premium league like the FFPC, who would you be taking at tight end if you narrowed your choices down to Evan Ingram or O.J. Howard? Um, I would probably roll Ingram, actually, oddly enough. Even though, you know, you look at the teams and you think the Giants are going to be significantly worse, and they might not be, though, because, it, you know, the Buccaneers may not be all that great. Ingram really is going to command targets. Howard has competition for targets. He really does. He's, you know, he's probably the third third wheel there. Ingram might be number one target on that team. Even right. when, even when all those guys come back. So I think Ingram's the play for me there. I think Sigmund Bloom on, on uh, one of the Football Guys podcasts is talking about how we could just see – uh, things go week to week in that Giants offense. It could be an Engram week. It could be a Barkley week. It could be a Shepard week when he gets back. It could be a Tate week when he gets back. That might just be uh, what we've seen. Um, I did like the Roto. I don't know if you saw the Roto World blurb um, uh, about Eli Manning taking some first team reps, you know, with the Giants. Uh, uh, Roto World said uh, the Giants want to get Daniel Jones some work, but they want to see what they have in Eli Manning first. So they're being cheeky. Yes, it was a very cheeky comment, which I appreciated. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, so, so that is where we uh, we fall in on uh, on those two tight ends. I think I like Engram better, even though he is going a little bit later than Howard, uh, for the points that you made and uh, the Bruce Arians effect too of of just you know maybe the most tight, uh, talented tight end Arians has ever had, but Arians has not really made a point of featuring his tight end in his offenses in the past two. So something to be wary of, no question. Moving on into the fourth round, Chris Godwin to Eric Moody as his number three receiver. So he gets three receivers within his first four picks. Uh, Risinger and Ditta going for the balanced effect as they get Josh Jacobs at the 402. Two wideouts, two receivers, as does Darren Armani. Now going with T.Y. Hilton at the 403 tonight. Derrick Henry. A 403, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what the hell happened? <laughs> so Hilton, uh, just to uh, let everybody know. He was a 2 3 turn guy, Bob. Well, no, but he's fallen in the middle now. now well, a little bit. I'm no news. Yeah. Um, oh, Andrew Luck sat out of practice the other day. Uh, okay, let, um, let's wait till he goes off the board and we'll talk a little bit about him. <laughs> but T.Y. Hilton falls with a 403. His ADP over the last three days is 305. So that's a little bit more than a half what round is, of value there. What's Marlon Mack ADP? Marlon Mack, over the last three days in FFPC best ball drafts, those drafters have been taking him on average, Dave, at the <laughs> spot of 306. Yeah, so, so one Ar- pick after T.Y. Hilton. So Armani was sitting there like looking at the chops like, I'm either going to get Mack or Hilton. This is great. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's like, ah, oh, I, I got full choice. Right. And Diggs too, you know, like, so uh, – he passed on one, and he still ended up, he still had Hilton. The yeah, wow. yeah. So, and Hilton has his number two receiver, too, by the way. Uh, interesting stuff there. All right, so after um, Hilton goes Derrick Henry to Skorecki and um, uh, Richard Clement, uh, the FFPC Joes there, uh, they take Derrick Henry, the true rainbow start here, Dave, as they go receiver, tight end, quarterback, running back. Uh, to begin their draft. Robert Woods then to Rob Waziak from the Fantasy Footballers as their number three receiver. Julian Edelman is Chris Carlson's first wide out taken after he starts off with three running backs. Edelman, the Patriots receiver tonight, goes to Chris Carlson at the 406, followed by Brandon Cooks to Bob Harris. And then Mark Ingram, the third straight running back drafted by Cowart and Yarborough here. Uh, Ingram is the third running back after they started off with Hopkins in the first round. Kenny Galladay off the board. Boy, is it just me or does it seem like Kenny Galladay has literally gone at the 409 like the last three pros versus Joe's? Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly where he must go. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Can't go sooner or later. Can't, yeah, that is his, his only spot. I apologize if you have the fourth pick tonight. You are sort of, or, or any pros versus Joe's draft, you're sort of contractually obligated to take Kenny Galladay there, and that's where Michael Nazarek takes him tonight. I hear he's not a WR1 yet, though. That is uh, the rumor. I don't know if uh, we, we've gotten confirmation from Tupac in the chat room, but uh, yes, uh, Kenny oh, Galladay may or may oh, okay, fine, we got it now. OJ Howard off the board to Chad Schroeder, so this is interesting, Dave. Chad Schroeder starts off with three straight running backs, does not go receiver in the fourth, as he goes tight end in the fourth, with OJ Howard as the fifth tight end off the board, and then we get another tight end off the board right after that. Josh Hornsby takes Hunter Henry as his tight end one, and then DJ Moore as the number one receiver for Dave Sherman, and I gotta tell you, it, we, we've seen this before. 
I'm going to make a prediction right now that Dave Sherman somehow lands Cam Newton tonight as he gets McCaffrey and DJ Moore. He might get Curtis Samuel. He might get uh, Steve Smith. He might get Jonathan Stewart. He might get uh, Jake DeLone, for all I know. Uh, as he oh, is, who's that tight end that was good for so long? Wesley Waltz. Yeah, I might get Wesley might Waltz. Might get Wesley Waltz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no question. Julius Peppers might find his way on his team nice. uh, as, as well. I, we don't know. It, it's entirely possible. But DJ Moore goes with the final pick of the fourth round. I like the fact when you can go with three straight running backs and then for, you know, wanting to get a receiver in the fourth and DJ Moore falls to you. I, I you know, I'm a little I, – I hesitate to use the word concerned because I'm not concerned, but there's a lot of hype in Carolina Panthers camp for Christian McCaffrey. There's a lot of hype for DJ Moore, and the Curtis Samuel hype has been building as well. You know whose hype has not been building in Carolina? It's one Cam Newton. And I just question, like, why are we talking about McCaffrey, Moore, and Samuel so much? And, and People are under and, the radar about Newton, but go ahead. There, okay, so talk about that a little bit. I, there's people who have been saying that on Twitter. They've been saying it in general that, you know, if, you, know you draft all these other guys, and Cam Newton really is a huge beneficiary. And Cam Newton in general, is a, he's a top five, top six, top seven fantasy QB yeah. when he's healthy. He almost always is when he's healthy. Right. What was he when he was a rookie? He was like QB two, three, or four. He was super high. Yeah, super so, high, I mean, yeah. If, he, if he's healthy and he got the shoulder surgery, everything looks good. And often he has more offensive weapons, I think, one could argue he's ever had. Wouldn't you say um, yeah. I mean, I, I, you I, don't, I, if you don't believe in the talent of Samuel or DJ Moore, that's different. But, it was, I mean, McCaffrey's a superstar stud running back. Everyone agrees he's a top four, you know, redraft pick. Right. And then you have, you have I mean, he had really bad receivers before for so long. I mean, he had bad running back play, too, with Jonathan Stewart and stuff like that. He couldn't catch it all. Right. So, uh, I think this is a, it's, a, it's made for camp. Do you want to take a guess at what number of quarterback he's going off the board in FFPC drafts? Uh, 13. 11. He is the 11th quarterback off the board. I mean, the the, our, the other argument would be that because he has more talented players, he doesn't need he doesn't have to rush it as often. He doesn't need to run it in you know. Uh, McCaffrey is actually a pretty good red zone runner. So yeah. He doesn't have to do all those things that he used to have to do, but he's still going to do them as you know he's getting pressured. He's going to run sometimes. Uh, Blitz the Mania chiming in in the chat room saying that Cam Newton and he's done a ton of drafts. Uh, Cam Newton's been very undervalued all drafting season. I kind of agree with that, no question. Um, so I guess I don't kind of agree with that. I fully agree with it. The one thing I'm noticing in a lot of these drafts is if you have a, an early pick, and let's say you have the the one benefit of having a top four pick is in the tight for the tight end position. Sure. Is a lot of times you have two options in the second and fourth round because you see those pockets. You have uh, Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz, and Kelsey goes in the first, but Kittle and Ertz a lot of times will drop to the late second. And so if you want one of those guys, not always, but a lot of those times you can grab them. If, and if you don't get them, or if you choose not to take them, oftentimes you will have your option of, not not all of them, but Ingram, uh, O.J. Howard, and Hunter Henry are the next three. And it yeah. seems like these big breaks, right? It's like Kelsey, and then it's Ertz, Kittle, and then it's Ingram, Howard, Henry, and then it's a drop-off after that. Yeah, uh, to your point, um, I'll just let everybody know this. Over the last three days, Kelsey 106, Kittle and Ertz have identical 209 ADP, so Kittle has actually caught Ertz. So right in that wheelhouse. And then to your point, 407, 408, 409, yes, Howard, so. Henry, Engram. And so generally speaking, if you have one, two, three, or four pick, you will, in one of one, one of those five guys is going to drop you. Should be there. Yes. Should be there. One of them will drop you just by chance if it's going to happen. So it, it's kind of a nice. It is a nice benefit to having one of those top four picks if you're looking at tight end earlier. Right, exactly. How do you? How would you? I, do, have I, okay, they're all blurring together now. This is the six <laughs> pros. Hey, have I asked you about how you would attack the tight? I know I usually ask you this every single year, but how would you attack the tight end position in a tight end premium league? I guess it kind of depends where you're picking from. You kind of already talked about how you would do it if you had an early pick. But what if you're picking in the middle of the round? What if you were picking uh, at the end of the board? Would you be investing a first-round pick if you had the 106 in Travis Kelsey? Would you be investing an in, in early to mid second-round pick in Ertz or Kittle, or would you be waiting on those guys in the second round? If I had a pick in the, you know, like the 8 through 12 range, I probably would be just waiting for some sort of tight end value to hit me, if possible. And it doesn't always happen, but I would probably – I probably would not be drafting Kelsey be gone. I probably would avoid Ertz and Kittle because there's other opportunities there. Although, you know, if you like Ertz, I mean, you know, man, the guy had as much he has as many receiving receiving yards as some of the other receivers are going in that spot. So I don't think if you take Ertz in the second round, early second round, I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. Um, Kittle I'm a little bit less a little bit less of a fan of. 
Um, and then I, I just, and again, on the third, fourth turn, I can't see taking Ingram, Howard, or Henry right. Right quite there. Uh, but I, I, there's, there's other tight ends that I like a little bit later, but you're kind of a, sort of pumping that position to some extent. What? To really hit the receivers and running backs. When you say you're a little bit less of a fan of George Kittle, are you talking about a little bit less of a fan of him in comparison to Zach Ertz or just in general with Kittle this year? In comparison to Ertz. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I think he's a, I think he's a fine fit. I don't, you know, two Packers like him, but whatever. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, so I've heard. Okay. I've heard a few woofs out there on, on Kittle? On the Twitter about, yeah, <laughs> He doesn't ever explain it. That's his analysis. It equals W O O F and cap. Yeah. Well. So thanks, thanks, Mike. You know you can call in. Those phone lines are open. Dave, Twitter is not for analysis. Twitter is for takes. Yeah, for for put downs and yeah, and zingers, shove offs. Yeah, shove offs. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Yeah, I do shove like that. Shove off. If you uh, if say. if you want to get more uh, shove offs and zingers, remember the high stakes fantasy football hour airs every Friday night at ten nine central on demand streaming. Always available for listening anytime. HSFFHour.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, uh, Podbean, Overcast, or Dave's preferred method of podcast listening, Spreaker. Always Spreaker. available there as well. I like well. the root beer, too. Uh, that's Sprecher. Um, but close enough. It's spelled the same, right? We'll just have the two dots over the it, is, it is not spelled the same. Let me say something. same. S-P-R-E-C-H-E-R is the root beer. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R is the podcast. Uh, I know for sure Ludwig von Spreaker Spreaker owns both. Really? No, I'm just talking to that. He started the root beer and was looking for a new challenge in life. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, conglomerate. This uh, podcasting, uh, I think that there's uh, something there. I will take a look at this podcasting and see if I can uh, start something there. But first, a root beer. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's like, it's like in Breaking Bad, that German conglomerate. I don't even know if that was a German an accent, quite frankly. I don't was, it was care. It's like French-German. They all lost World War II. What do we care what they say? All right, moving on. Eric Ebron at the 501. Who knows World War? Sure. That's Got it. States. Thank you. Derek. Uh, uh, no, you don't need to gloss, gloss over it. There's no politically incorrect method about you know talking about our dominance in World Wars. It's fine. I don't want anybody triggered. <laughs> Eric Ebron to Dave Sherman tonight at the 501 as he takes him as his first tight end. James White to Josh Hornsby as his second running back at the 502. Tyler Lockett is the first receiver drafted by Chad Schroeder as he goes RB, 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 and then TE, followed by Tyler Lockett as his number one wide receiver. Philip Lindsay is joining Alvin Kamara in the backfield for FF Masterminds Mike Nazarick. Tyler Boyd off the board tonight at the 505 at Cowart and Yarborough. And then Sony Michelle, the Patriots running back, uh, the quad, you know, the quote-unquote starter, for the Patriots, actually goes as the second Patriots running back off the board, White at the 502. Michelle is the choice for Bob Harris at the 506 tonight to go with his Nick Chubb in the backfield. Cooper Cup joins Julian Edelman as uh, Chris Carlson starting two wide receivers. Cup at the 507 tonight. A couple of running backs here, Tariq Cohen Mm -hmm. to Rob Waziak from the Fantasy Footballers. Chris Carson to uh, Skarecki and uh, Richard Clement, uh, the FFPC Joes here drafting in the nine spot. And then you have Vance McDonald as the first tight end off the board for Darren Armani. Mike Williams, uh, Chargers receiver to Rizinger and Ditta. That is their third receiver drafted here from the 11th spot. And then rounding things out in the fifth round is Lamar Miller to Eric Moody. Dave, do you have a comment? Uh, Lamar Miller has seen mighty early. I, I feel like that's actually... At the 5-12? Yes, I think you could have gotten him at the 7-12. Uh, and I know I'm right. On average, he's going at the 7-08. So. Shoot! So, so, all right, so 40% chance you could have got him to seven as well. Uh, that seems accurate. That seems accurate. All right, 40, 35, yeah. 40. So now we, we you kind of – You've got to take that risk. So we talked, and I – can I get it? Yes, I can't get into this because he just went off the board. Um, we got in the conversation from uh, four for four's Peter Overs that last night. Um, he actually left it up to us. Who, would, who should he take here? And he was deciding between Lamar Miller and Darius Geis. And I said Lamar Miller, who he ended up going with. You said Darius Geis. And you are a known unlover of Lamar Miller. But I know you also don't like Deontay Foreman. So nor have I really, nor have I really been a head for fancy for liking Darius Geis, by the way. Right, that, uh, actually, excellent point. I didn't think about what that. What did draft? What was his draft pick? I, I'd have to look it up. I don't, I don't remember. He was super late. He was like the 11, 10, 10 11 pick. 10, 10 or 11. Um, so I look at... Um, this choice that is facing fantasy he owners. Eighth round pick for him last night. I'm serious. He looked his eight old. He, he might have been. I don't. I don't. Anyway, know. I started on three all the time. Lamar Miller versus Deontay Foreman. Consider their values tonight. 
or in general? Would you be looking at either of those guys to, to acquire on your team, Dave? I know you don't trust Foreman's Achilles. I know you don't trust Lamar Miller's Lamar Millerness. But if push came to shove, are, are either of those players a, a player you'd like to be in business in? And before you answer that question, Lamar Miller, on average, going at the 708, which I just said, Foreman, on average, is going at the 1008. So you get three full rounds of value if you go with Foreman. Yeah, I'm taking Lamar Miller for sure over Foreman. Okay. There's even word talking out there that says, they, they say, uh, oh, Foreman's in good shape and he's competing for the number two job. That, like the coach is saying that. Right. He's not competing for the number one job. Right. He's competing for the number two job. So I don't even, I don't, I don't. So it's Lamar Miller locked in. That is, exa- that's right. what the team is saying. Right. That's not me talking. Right. Well, now it's me talking. I'm repeating what the team is saying. Lamar Miller is a starting running back. Foreman's coming back off an Achilles injury. Uh, he's had a long time to recover. He hasn't shown anything, really. Yeah. And he's still going to draft him in the 10th round. That's fine. People can take him all day long if they want there. But you will not be taking him in the 10th No, I would not take him there. I do actually, I don't think Lamar Miller is a bad pick if you're going into a zero RB type strategy. Right. Yeah, That no, that would make sense at that point. No question. He, he's, he's, he's not, he's, the thing is, for half a million dollars, it's not a lot of fun to be popping in Lamar Miller as hey, he's taking the 6th or 7th round. It doesn't, it doesn't seem likely that you're going to win a half million with Lamar Miller starting for in week 16. I'll... Dave, it, do, it doesn't seem likely, right? But sometimes the unsexy pick, the unfun pick, the the um, the uh, boring pick, is the pick that ends up uh, grinding it out for you. And who, what was our former main event champ? It was Dante Rosario? Don Metter. Don Metter had Dante plus. Rosario yeah. starting as his tight end. And, and who is Dante Rosario? I don't even know who he is. He's either. out of the league. He was a Carolina Panthers tight end back in the day. But yeah, that's something that. You know, we okay. I'll bring Tim McCullough up because we haven't brought him up since night two of the pros versus Joe. In morning. this competition, Tim McCullough drafted one tight end in I can't remember what year it was, 2013, 2014, way back then from Roto Experts. Might have been a little sooner, like 15 or 15. Well, whatever. Um, but it was gay. So, you know what? It was 15 because Sealy won it in 16 because the Roto Experts guys went back to back. It was gay on his like it was, leg. And it, it, yes. And that was the only tight end he drafted. He won not only his league, he won the overall competition. And to that point, Don Metter, a, a longtime FFPC player, a veteran, actually I, I believe a guy who's drafted in this competition before, um, has, you know, I, I've had him on the HSFF hour. He's, I think he did the, the road of his high stakes lowdown as well. And, and he said, like, what do you think? I, you know, it's, it's, there's been there's been a few episodes. Uh, yeah, you're, you're kind of on the air a lot. And yeah, and so Don Metters he kind of just poo pooed the tight ends, and he proved it when he won. And I believe his normal starting lineup was four running backs when he won the the whatever it was, one hundred fifty thousand or two hundred thousand dollar grand prize. It might have only been a hundred though. Or a hundred, whatever it was. It was six figures. I know that. Um, what his normal starting lineup for that final three-week sprint was four running backs, and Dante Rosario was his tight end, and he won the whole GD thing. That's true. You know, it wasn't 2,400 teams, but it was uh, it's still impressive. Yeah, highly impressive. You think anybody could ever pull something like that off again? Nope. <laughs> you think anybody could win pros versus Joe's again with one tight end? Uh, yeah, could they? Sure. Like, oh, you think they could? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, because it's the same number of teams. I mean, it's not, you know, it's kind of a small number that of teams. That is true, 72 teams. Yeah, if the rest of, if the rest of your lineup is, or the rest of your squad is really dominant. Or what, if, what one, if you take Kelsey in the first round? Yeah, and that, that, yeah that's, you, you, you totally could do that. Yeah. So actually, it wouldn't even be that impossibly hard. Well, I'll put it this, let me tell you this. I'll McCullough's already walked on the moon. Everybody else is Buzz Aldrin now. If, if let's just say, theoretically speaking, that in six leagues, everyone that had, everyone that drafted Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz, opted only to draft that one tight end, I think there'd be a reasonable chance that one of them would have a shot to win it because of that. Because right. Those teams all drafted the elite tight end. Yeah. Uh, getting back to our Kittle conversation from earlier, Tupacker in the chat room says, check out his injury report. The operation game wanted to have a George Kittle version, but there wasn't enough room for all the body parts. So he is not a believer in George Kittle. I don't even know what, what, what he's getting. In other words, Did I miss all his injuries? Yes. In, in other words, he's always hurt and it hurts everywhere. That that's the point that Two Packer is making here. Um, so that's why you right. you do that, and I'm going to take everybody through the sixth round here, which just completed the number two quarterback off the board. Wow, quarterbacks are falling a little bit tonight. Uh, Deshaun Watson to Eric Moody at the 601. AJ Green, who we found out today from head coach Zach Taylor in Cincinnati, that it's going to be a multiple regular season game absence for AJ Green, but Rissinger and and Ditta are getting him as their number one, two, three. 
four receiver. That is could be a nice value. We'll see what happens. Go ahead. Akil is the number six ranked tight end as far as most likely to get hurt behind Eifert, Reed, Delaney Walker, and then Kill. 59.7% chance. Projected use missed two and a half. So Meyer is actually kind of Okay, wait a minute. Kind of correct. Who's number one on that list? Oh, uh, Eifert. And and where is Jordan Reed? Uh he's second. Oh he is, okay. Eifert, Reed, Walker, Kittle. It's interesting that Greg Olson's not in there. You know, Olsen doesn't really have a big injury history. Well, he's, he's, he's had a couple of nasty foot injuries. Well, he's, I mean, he's in there. He's like, he's at 49.5%. Guess who's the least likely? <laughs> this, this person, the, the tight end is least likely to get hurt is like off the charts least likely to get hurt. Okay. But he's 12.1%. The next lowest is 30%. All right. So is this a guy that's being drafted in the top 15? And I'm asking Top 15 tight ends? No. Yeah. He's, okay, so he's below that. No, yeah, he's below that. He's a starting tight end in the NFL. He's a starting tight end. He's not drafted in the top 15. He's, a, he's, a, he's had an excellent career. Is that that? Oh, uh, Jason Witten. Bam. Yeah, there exactly. you go. Exactly. Yeah, that's funny. That he's is a terrible announcement. Funny as hell. Was, he never got hurt during announcement either. Yeah, well, only his pride. Calvin Ridley is the uh, third pick here in the sixth round. He goes to Darren Armani. Alshon Jeffrey is the second wide receiver drafted by Skorecki and Clement here uh, at the nine, or excuse me, at the uh, five on uh, no the six oh four. I don't know what he, I'm talking about. He's saying Jeffrey too. It's been annoying for a few days. Alshon Jeffries goes to Devont uh, to uh, to Skorecki here uh, and to pair with Devonte Adam. It is David Montgomery right after that. So this is we have the Bears running back stack for Rob Waziak from the fantasy footballers as he gets Cohen in the fifth and now David Montgomery in the sixth. Interesting. Dante Pettis, the first non-white receiver drafted by Chris Carlson. I uh, was just putting that out there as he gets Edelman Cup and now Dante Pettis in the sixth round. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm actually not kidding. That's what happened, but it's, it's a fun little observation. Darius Geis, right after that, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Darius Geis to Bob Harris as his number three running back tonight. Football diehards uh, Hall of Famer takes Geis as his uh, third running back. Kenyon Drake is the fourth running back off the board to Coward and Yarborough here in the sixth round. And then Austin Hooper, the first team to double up on tight ends tonight, is indeed Michael Nazarick, the founder of FFMastermind.com. Austin Hooper backing up George Kittle there for Nazarick squad. Allen Robinson, the second receiver drafted by Chad Schroeder at the 6'10". And wrapping things up in the sixth, uh, sixth round here is Miles Sanders to Josh Hornsby. And then Christian Kirk, the number two receiver, for Dave Sherman tonight to go with his DJ Moore. Wow, that's a, 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 a nice little breakout pair there with uh, Moore and Kirk as his two receivers. And we look back on the sixth round here. Dave, what do you make of uh, – this is probably not a strategy you would employ, but when you're Nazarick and you already have Kittle on your squad – and Nazarick, by the way, who is – I don't believe he's ever been the overall winner in pros versus Joes. I know he's won his league – I believe he's won his league multiple times. He is a veteran of this competition. Yeah, he's and had some good performances. He's had some very good performances. And I, know, I think there's been times where he hasn't won his league, but he's still finished in the top five overall. Uh, you have, it's been good enough to tell us a story about it. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, it sticks like, in my mind. Yeah, he's like, let me tell you about this. It's like, no one cares about your team, Mike. But I, I care about his team. I'm kidding. Mike, right. Mike's great. We love Mike. All right, fair enough. Um, so you have uh, Austin Hooper going to uh, him after he already has Kittle. Is this something that you would ever do, Dave, is, is take two quasi-elite tight ends? Well, uh, I guess I mean, Hooper's not elite, uh, but Hooper's solid. Would you take an elite and a, and a solid tight end here with two of your six, uh, six top six picks? Uh, I would, but probably not if it was – I mean, Hooper does have some upside, but I think I, – I, I don't feel like it's a lot. I feel like we kind of know where he's at or what, he is, what he's capable of. He's supposed to deal with Calvin Ridley. He has to deal with Julio Jones. Um, ahead of him as target monsters. And Freeman's back. Freeman's going to be a lot of, you know, he's going to be more targeted. So I think I would not have drafted Hooper myself once I owned Kittle. I would have probably gone with receiver there if I were him. How about the job that... Uh, well, actually, well maybe, maybe even not running back. Anyway. Okay. How about the job that Chad Schroeder's done here after he starts off with uh, nary a receiver to be found in the first four rounds and he gets Lockett in the fifth and Allen Robinson in the sixth. You like that when you get that, uh, that non-receiver start and then get Lockett and Robinson? Okay, so first of all, there's a couple things. Okay. Chad is in the chat room. And secondly, Chad is the most winningest fantasy player in the, in the world of all time. And Chad spends a lot of money with us. Right. So I love his team. It's, right. the, it's the best team I've ever seen in my life. Duly it's, noted. It's outstanding. I understand. <laughs> I see what's going on here. I see what's going on you here. You know what? 
I really actually okay. So first of all, you get Barkley. Are we? What are we talking about? I mean, are we I'm going to recuse the whole team. No, no, no. Just the receivers that you got, and I'm going to recuse myself in this conversation because Lockett and Robinson have been the foundation of my dynasty Carrington <laughs> yeah. team for like the last three years. So I really can't honestly, unbiasedly answer this. Yeah, you know, I've, I've liked Allen Robinson for a number of years. He's kind of struggled the past couple, but I can see the upside. Lockett's never been a big a fan. I've never been a huge fan of, of his necessarily, but I, I get it. I mean, he's the number one receiver, and he has an elite quarterback with Wilson. I like the O.J. Howard pick, because what he did with Aaron in the fourth round is he kind of forced the issue, and, and he knew that teams one and two do not have tight ends. And the Henry pick was kind of an obvious one, but I think having Ebron going to Sherman, uh, that gets a little bit forced. I don't know that, that Sherman would necessarily want to do that. Not that it's a panic pick, but just, you took him, and that's fine. Um, so I thought, I thought that was a good strategy, and I think, uh, I think Chad's doing fine. He knows what the hell he's doing. Yeah. Connor was a super value in the second half. We'll, again, we'll talk about his team later. We will get into that, no question, um, uh, for sure, as, as we get into team analysis roughly in about 40 minutes here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. You are listening to the live coverage of the 2019 FFPC uh, Pros versus Joe's Swan Song, as it were. Actually, I think Swan Song means second to last. I'd have to look that up. I could be wrong. But this is indeed the last Pros versus Joe's draft of the season. Is it the last live draft we're going to cover? More to come on that. Um, but this is uh, the throw in the towel at league number six tonight. And we take you through the seventh round here. Kicking things off is Dave Sherman, who goes with Austin Eckler as his number four running back. Robbie Anderson to Josh Hornsby here as his third receiver. Jared Cook to Chad Schroeder as he gets his second tight end here in the seventh round followed by one Andrew Luck to Michael Nazarek as his number one quarterback. Would you like to say something? Because I would. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a distinct sound to it. You know, we have a little bit more of a vertical slim can. Uh, people, oh, did everybody hear me? People can tell in the chat room, there's a certain distinct sound to a white claw. Oh, and yeah. And they all knew it. Yeah. Well, Bucky, Bucky's like missionary, though. He's having a line. I'm having a line, yeah. <laughs> That might be what's available. Ain't no flaws with this cloth. No <laughs> question. It is delicious. You know, the video has 5.4 million views. It's insane. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know who it was. A shout out to whoever did that two minute and 20 second YouTube video of, of uh, White Claw Summer 2019. <laughs> you can look it up on YouTube, of course, after the show. I want to talk about Andrew Luck here. He is still not practicing after he missed um, minicamp, and, and now he's missing training camp here with a calf issue. Now, you were the champion of don't draft Andrew don't draft it because year. because of his shoulder right um and you didn't yeah, draft him anywhere you, you but you know what I turned out I turned you, out fine but you got listen the other thing with quarterbacks too and and I guess this gets into a draft philosophy argument I'm not that I'm trying to defend you here because God knows I never want to do that on this show but you got great value at quarterback elsewhere and so I think the philosophy kind of is is yeah there was some upside with Andrew Luck last year but there's a lot of downside too and I don't technically know if it's necessarily worth the risk, especially where Luck was going, when you consider all the other quarterbacks that you could have gotten at that point or later. So while you may have been wrong not to draft Andrew Luck, I don't think you necessarily got the quarterback position as a whole wrong. No, if, okay, if had, let's look at this. Who, were, who was the quarterback last year that if I had told you don't draft this person no matter what uh, would have really hurt you a lot? That would be Patrick Mahomes. Right. He's a player that took people from wherever they could have Not probably. that you said this, but you're saying no, hypothetically. I yeah, I didn't say that. But, right. right. If I said, don't draft Mahomes, he's awful, he's overrated, whatever, and he was going late enough. But he's a player that actually won people championships, won people leagues, and so forth. Andrew Watts did fine, but he wasn't like a total hashtag game changer. He, right. He was good. <laughs> We're still doing it. <laughs> What? All right, no, whatever, it's fine. Um, it's okay, so getting back to 2019, are you concerned with this calf thing with him? Because I, I don't know if that affected T.Y. Hilton's fall tonight. I, I think it certainly could have. I don't know if it affected um, Marlon Mack, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know what to think tonight. Um, it didn't affect Eric Ebron, I, I guess. But Andrew Luck and his calf, at what point do we start becoming concerned with this that he's not practicing? I'm really not that overly concerned, but I'm also not really drafting Andrew Luck unless I get value at on him, um, and, I, and we, we had this discussion about whether I would take Watson or Luck, and I would take Watson. Right. So, but I don't think Luck's a bad pick necessarily. The T-Rex himself, the T-Rex Texan, Deshaun Watson, uh, you would take over Andrew Luck, and that's what happened tonight as he went 
my goodness, uh, almost a round and a half before Andrew Luck. Jarvis Landry, right after Luck goes to Nazareth, Jarvis Landry goes to Cowart and Yarborough here as the uh, 705 pick. A couple of running backs off the board is Tevin Coleman as the number four to Bob Harris, and then it's Rashad Penny as the number four to Chris Carlson. TKQT is uh, going to Rob Waziak from the Fantasy Footballers at the 708 tonight. That's his fourth receiver. Sammy Watkin going to uh, Skarecki and Clement here at the 709, followed by Daryl Henderson to Darren Armani as his number three running back. David Njoku as the starting tight end to Rich Risinger and Lou, Lou Ditta at the uh, 711. And then Will Fuller, the final pick of the seventh round to Eric Moody from FantasyData.com. I want to give a shout out. I, I think it was Blitz Demania who said this, and, and I feel, I'll feel bad if he did not say this, but... Um, so he, he was mentioning how the, the coach, and I didn't see this quote exactly, but Freddie Kitchens was saying that Njoku needs to improve his blocking uh, or, or something to that effect. Um, and, and for a guy that we expect to be a, a matchup problem for defenses and should be putting up a lot of fantasy points, improving blocking is not really what you want to hear uh, out, of, uh, out of Cleveland in order for Njoku to get more, not only targets, but snaps on the field, Dave. No, I agree with that. You know He's been, this is his third year. He's been in the league a long time. I'm actually glad they called him out on that because maybe he's, maybe he just, just felt like, you know, he came to the league at age 20, so super young, and maybe he just kind of felt he could skate by for so long yeah. and not really have to work. So it's, it's good that they bring that up because, you know, it's a very important part of the position. And he's a big, I mean, you look at his arms. I mean, the guy's got, oh, he's, an Adonis. he's got muscles upon muscles. I mean, it's yeah. incredible. He should be, you know, he should be popping, the, you know, he should be knocking people all over the place. You know, this is a side story, but, you know, Jalen Hurd got into two fights with in San Francisco, and they said it was because he was blocking too hard. That's awesome. If I was the coach, I'd be like, F and A, baby, let's keep yeah. it going. You know, yep. fight again, fight more. Let's tell okay. the family. All right, Hurd, take a lap <laughs> and keep it up. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is going to be a total hashtag hot take, and I, I'm probably, I'm like 95% of reading too much into this. Do you remember last year with Hard Knocks, which I think debuts next week on HBO? Um, with the Raiders, but last year it was the Browns. Do you remember when, when they did that piece on David Njoku and he was really getting into meditation and self-awareness and just having this calmness about him? Um, is there any, can we read anything into that? In other words, that this is a guy that's, that doesn't have that aggressive punchy in the mouth mentality that he is, he's zoned in much in the way that you know, Arian Foster or, or Ricky Williams was, you know, where, where they're, and again, I'm probably reading too much into this, but I just, I don't know if, they, if there's a correlation there at all, where, where it's just like, look, he's, he's going to be a pass catcher. He'll, he'll be a matchup uh, problem for defenses on the team, but don't expect anything more than that. That's, it's a possibility. He could be a soft tight end. And I, I'm not, I don't want to use that word because this guy could flatten me with his pinky. Well, but, I mean, it's possible. I mean, just because he can beat you up doesn't mean he's not necessarily soft in the NFL. Well, I mean, 99% of the people walking this planet can beat me up when it probably no, wouldn't take much. Okay, 99%, Fine, 97, whatever. 99% I mean, of NFL players can beat you up. No, nah, it's 150% of NFL players can <laughs> beat you might me up. You think maybe one, one hunter. Blitzdemania uh, saying he's a hippie in the uh, chat room. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I, and not that there's anything wrong with that. I know Blitzdemania could take me away on this project. Uh, allegedly. Should we tell that story on the air? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, so this was in, Jeremy Rose, who's in our chat room right now. Yeah, and drafted in uh, the pros versus Joes already. This was at um, Caesar's Palace. Was it last year or two years ago? That was last year. So this 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 happened where he was actually in the restroom at Caesar's Palace, uh, right outside the sports book, and, along with Floyd Money Mayweather was in there as well. And we so this is what this, he was this on the same. On, he was on, on Sunday. Right? Yeah, he was on. Sure. Let me just okay, so on Sunday during the NFL games, right, we were all hanging out. We were watching a bunch. We had some seats reserved. I was not there. Okay, so we, we not yeah. any, but the rest of us were there. Right. Okay, so go ahead. And uh, he was on the same urination schedule as Money Mayweather. And he was uh, promoting like he's going to have a fight. Yeah, yeah, and probably gambling a lot on NFL Week One, whatever. And his whole team, his uh, his uh, entourage, was in the was in the can as well. And now this is the part I I won't get right, so I wanted have you say the exact quote, but Jeremy Roach had something to say to Floyd Mayweather as he was leaving the restaurant. <laughs> he, said, oh, he said something like, Pacquiao would have kicked your ass in his prime. Right, yeah. 
and Mayweather heard this. Jeremy had a number of white claws in Right, he did, yes. Um, maybe, he, yeah, well, whatever. Uh, but he yelled this out, and it didn't take too much longer, the way I understand the story, for Mayweather's team to impolitely <laughs> escort Roach out of the bathroom. And Blitz the Mania had a story to tell, uh, but I don't know if he washed his hands. Oh, and so I don't hilarious. know if he got the opportunity to. That was so hilarious. We were all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, so that is uh, that. That's that's our, our roach story that that we will tell tonight as we wrap up the seventh round of action. And on that note, let's go back to the phone lines here. You're on the air and with the uh, Dave and Balky on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. The two one four is joining us. Who is this? This is Josh eighty eight D. How are you boys doing? Long time no talk, Josh Hornsby at Fantasy ADHD on Twitter. Check out all his work at Roto Grinders. Uh, I want to uh, get kind of pick your brain, knowing that you had the second pick in this draft tonight. We're through nine rounds for you. How how has the draft gone? How have you been executing your your uh, your strategy, your game plan? How how's it been going? Yeah, I think things have gone pretty well so far. I mean, when you get in a room with guys like this, you're going to get sniped left and right. So you have to be able to flow like water, as Bruce Lee said. So that's been my draft strategy <laughs> for the last three seasons is to flow like water. So when when somebody gets uh gets ahead of you and snipes your player, you just you have a backup plan, you you you're ready to flex in a heartbeat. And that's that's what tonight's been all about. Yeah, and you are you're now a veteran of this competition, so you know what to expect. And I want to ask you about your second overall pick because we saw Todd Burroughs take. By the way, he's only tweeted three times during the during, <laughs> during the draft. So what the hell is going he's, on? It's, it's a it's tough draft. Enough, it's a tough draft. He's just <laughs> focusing on the draft here tonight, Dave. Um, I, we saw Todd Burroughs take David Johnson at the 101 last night. Uh, you take him at the 102 tonight, which if Burroughs wouldn't have taken him at the 101 last night, this would have been the highest we've seen David Johnson go. Tell us what you like about David Johnson in 2019, Josh. Well, th- to be honest, I-, I like the offense that he's going to be in. I- the-, the offensive line itself is is going to be uh, probably only marginally better than it was in 2018, but the fact that he gets to play in a four-wide scheme with a creative play caller, with a quarterback that can actually get away from pressure – and have targets to scheme toward David Johnson. It's just, to me, it's a match made in heaven for his ability, his ability to get outside of the big hog mollies up front and work in space. I mean, it's, to me, it's a match made in heaven, and I, I like him over Barkley, over Kamara, over Elliott for that reason this season. Josh, you had the opportunity to draft whatever Patriots running back you wanted. You went with James White at the 502 over Sony Michelle as the number one Patriots running back off the board. Which I love that. Was it just was it was it the fact that he's healthy? Well, I mean, I guess Michelle is healthy-ish. Um, was was that the fact that you why you took White first? Was it the fact that he's going to catch more passes than Michelle this year? Tell tell us a little bit about what went into the thought process with the White pick for you at 502. Yeah, the other player I was looking at at 502 was Chris Carson, but I decided I wanted to see if he would by chance fly to me in the sixth round. I didn't think it was very likely, but I wanted to take that risk. And on on the flip side of that, James White, I like his receiving floor. I think he's the most dependable back in New England. Now, does that mean he's going to score 15 points every week on seven or eight receptions? No, it doesn't. But I think he's the type of running back at RB2 that provides that really solid floor that you need so you can take swings on, you know, these long shot running backs later in the draft. So the thing about the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, oh, back to great question. Yeah. And it's interesting, just in the past few days, you've heard some of the beat writers from Philly saying that uh, Miles Sanders is moving at a, at a different speed than players like Jordan Howard and so forth. Um, you said Miles Sanders in the sixth round. I've kind of been negative on Miles Sanders. I'm kind of coming around lately because I've always hated Jordan Howard. I always thought he sucked. My always, my concern was that they would just keep spreading the ball around, but they did draft him pretty early. And my again, part of the reason I didn't like Sanders is that you know he had these injury issues kind of early on, but it sounds like he's over those. Uh, convince me on Miles Sanders because I actually want to like him. So yeah, just give us your sales pitch on him if you don't mind. Okay, so the Miles Sanders feel is that. Uh, I mean, you did mention the draft pedigree. That they spent a lot of draft capital to acquire him. That's something they haven't done under the Howie Roseman regime. So, to me, that speaks volumes about how they value Miles Sanders as a prospect. On top of that, they, I think they've been looking for a bell cow running back for this offense for the last two or three seasons. You know, since um, 
this Doug Peterson has arrived, and you know they, they traded a pick to try to get um, you know Jay Ajayi to fill that role. That didn't work out so well. They tried to get Josh Adams to fill that role a bit last year. That didn't work out so well. And now they've spent this draft capital on Miles Sanders. And the other guys in Philadelphia, they are bit pieces, right? They can fill a role, which is good. That's kind of the Patriot way you fill a role. But Sanders has a total package. So when Sanders is on the field, Philadelphia can be as multiple as they want to be. That's what they want to do. So to me, if they can get Sanders up to speed in the offense, his health is good. I think he's a three-down back in this offense. And this offense is going to be dynamite. We know that. Josh Hornsby joining us here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Follow him on Twitter at Josh underscore ADHD. The last question I want to ask you before we let, let you get back to the drafting action, what happened at that 4-5 um, or five turn here? Because we saw we actually talked about this earlier. Now, Chad Schroeder takes O.J. Howard here. You end up going with Hunter Henry. I'm curious as to what you would have done there. Did the Howard pick affect at all what you were going to do at the 411, or were you locked into Henry? Would you have taken Howard if he was still available? Were you looking at a tight end there anyway? Can you kind of take us what you missed? Like six questions. Well, I just want to get through the thought process here. Answer all of them. Wait, no, or one of them is fine. Yeah, it's a great question. No, I, Howard was my one A there, and Henry was my one B. And I was what I was hoping was that DJ Moore would slide to the 502. Obviously, they took him at, at 412 and. And kind of crushed that, so I, you know, I fell back on James White. But, you know, I wanted what I thought was an elite tight end at a value, and, and Howard and Henry are that tight end to me this season. Now, would I've taken both of these guys at the four or five turn if they had been available, I would have thought long and hard about it. I would have thought long and hard about taking Hunter Henry over DJ Moore if I could have gotten and stacked those tight ends at four or five. But, you know, to me, they're kind of like tomato, tomato. I'm happy with either one, so that's why I went ahead and took Henry when I did. Uh, Josh, we, we we should mention this too. Um, FantasyADHD.com is uh, has been relaunched, as we found out from your Twitter feed. Can you tell the listeners what they can expect to find out there and why they should check that out? Yeah, here's a meeting tool. Yeah, so the plan to relaunch that site was it's something that's needed to be done for probably the past two years. It was just a very rudimentary, ugly site, and I relied on people going to the specific app sites as I built them. The problem is you have to remember slashes and words after the website, and that's not very helpful. So I relaunched the site with the idea of it being as a landing page for all of the different apps I do, uh, whether it be for Roto Grinders or a different website or on my own personal site, and use that as a launching pad for everything that I've done. So the plan is to go and redevelop some of the apps, make them a bit faster, make them all kind of live right there in my little fantasy ADHD ecosystem, and serve different purposes. So, you know, there's an Air Yards app. I've got a game script app that I'm that I'm redeveloping right now. In addition to the best ball apps that I've that I've had online for the last three seasons. So, if you want to, yeah, definitely go visit the site since I've relaunched it now. FantasyADHD.com. I appreciate the plug, fellas. And uh, if if something's broken, please let me know because I am not a web developer. I'm a hack. <laughs> but, dude, I mean. If you're not a web developer, I mean, the people that call themselves web developers, uh, they suck. They're not either. Yeah, really exactly. Anyway, I just looked at, I just went to the site and I looked at your logo. I actually love your logo. Have you, have you seen this, Bulky? Uh, no, I'm going to go to it right now. No, hold on. Let me check, check this out. Yeah, so check it out. It's, that's great. Fancy ADHD on it. Oh, know. I see There's it. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. great. That's really that nice is fantastic. Out. That is really, Big really branding. good. Yes. A excellent branding and excellent draft so far. And donate on the way. If you're using this tool for free, donate some money, give them some cash. You know, these pills aren't free. Yet. Exactly. They're not free. And uh, <laughs> and uh, they, sh they, they, they definitely uh, should be. DBS is charging. Yeah. They are indeed. <laughs> FantasyADHD.com is where to get all of Josh Warnsby's work. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh underscore ADHD. Josh, good luck the rest of the way. Good luck in all your drafts this year. We always appreciate hearing from you. Thanks so much for uh, competing again this year. Best of luck to you this summer, and uh, enjoy all your drafts, dude. Well, fellas, thanks for the time. Thanks for letting me call in. And the show's been great so far, so keep it up. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you so much, Josh. Uh, we'll we'll do our best to keep up uh, the the show being great. No promises there, as uh, I feel like we've uh, we've been skating on thin ice uh, thus far, Dave. I ended with the seventh round of action. We are going to get into the eighth round here, and what's interesting about the eighth round is we have, and I I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this, we have the longest quarterback run for sure of 2019 pros versus Joe's. Maybe, Dave, of all time. 
the no, longest no, quarterback well. run in pros versus Joe's history. That might be true. You know, this this is how quarterback runs kind of go in a lot of leagues. I'm, surp- I'm surprised that people are so, you know, so British. I mean, you just have, I mean, this is so more, laissez-faire yeah, about it. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. ruthless here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no question. It's it's cutthroat. And it got started by Chad Cocktail's injury. Did, did that have something to do with it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have an FFPC main event overall champion. He starts a run, and everybody starts listening. Okay, so let's get into it. The eighth round was led off by Royce Freeman going to Eric Moody from FantasyData.com. Aaron Rodgers off the board in the eighth round. My God, I just it, it's, it will never be real to me. Aaron Rodgers at the 8.02 tonight. Baker, it's going to get worse for him every year. It, well, th- I mean, that's listen, father time. That's how it works. But uh, Baker Mayfield at the 8.03. Latavius Murray off the board as the third running back drafted by uh, Skarecki and uh, Clement here. Uh, Kyler Murray to uh, Rob Waziek as his starting quarterback. Curtis Samuel off the board to Chris Carlson as his number four receiver. Corey Davis to uh, Bob Harris as his uh, third receiver that he has selected tonight. Sterling Shepard goes uh, to Cowart and Yarbrough tonight. That selection is the 808. Jordan Howard as the number three running back to Nazareth. And now here come the quarterbacks. Dave, I'm not going to stop at the eighth round. At the end of the eighth round, I'm going to go right through to, to get everybody the full effect of, of this quarterback. <laughs> very exciting. Chad Schroeder, Carson Wentz, Josh Hornsby, Cam Newton, Dave Sherman, Russell Wilson, and Jared Goff, Josh Hornsby, Jameis Winston, Chad Schroeder, Matt Ryan, Michael Nazareth, Drew Brees, Ray Coward, Tyson Yarbrough, Mitchell Trubisky, Bob Harris, Lamar Jackson, and rounding things off is Chris Carlson with one Dak Prescott. All right, Dave. <laughs> that is 10 quarterbacks off the board here. Yeah. Which right. one was your favorite? <laughs> Out of all 10 of those, Dave, you can have any one of them. From Wentz to Prescott, dollars to donuts. I mean, oh, come on. Nose to the grindstone. Who are you picking? Uh, probably Matt Ryan, actually. Which Ru- was oh, I thought you were going to say Russell Wilson. Oh, I think I would take that one. Really? Okay. Who was the sixth one of the mistakes? Yeah, he was the sixth one. Well, that's because Chad Schroeder knew he could take Carson Wentz and still get Matt Ryan. Yeah, well, he must have the Jedi mind trick going. I mean, Matt Ryan was number two uh, quarterback last year, right? Uh, that sounds right. He I, still I, has Muhammad Sanu, and he is really getting better. Uh, Julio My taking, boy, Austin Hooper. Your boy, Austin Hooper. Yeah. And Julio's taken off all three seasons. That is perfect. I, I love it. Yeah. I was cool. I would... That is exactly the right move. Dave, I actually, uh, I do an afternoon show here uh, in Northeast oh, Wisconsin. It? It's called The Show with Leo and Balky. You can find it at 95.3 FM uh, in uh, in Appleton, 99.1 in Oshkosh, AM 1570. You can also go to thescorewi.com and listen live anywhere around the world. Uh, we're on from 2 to 3 Monday afternoons, or excuse okay. me, Monday through Friday, weekday afternoons. You can check that out. And one of the things I bring up on the show, we have a segment called 1265 today, and it is a Packers segment that we do each and every day. What's it called? 1265 today. What is that supposed to mean? Um, it, it's a segment of 1265. What is 1265? That's, that's the street address for, for the Packers, 1265. So we're on 1265? Yes. What's the street? Uh, Holmgren, or I don't know what it is. Lombardi? I have no idea. Yeah, what if Holmgren gets accused of touching a little boy something or other? He, he's he's and, still... And, and he has listen, their own street name. I'm, listen, don't, don't listen, name hold on, hold on. I am not going to comment on that. But I will say this, that regardless of if that happens... Welcome to Mike Tyson Boulevard. Welcome to real life, because people will... Oh, he won us the Super Bowl, and, and that's the mentality. And I'll leave it at that. Well, now, anyway. one of the things I always bring up, and I brought this up last year too... I don't want any vested veterans playing in the preseason. I don't want them practicing. I don't want them doing anything. I understand the Packers have a lot of new pieces to work in on defense. I understand they're establishing a new offense. I don't want these guys establishing it when it doesn't count. Figure it out in the regular season. Put them in bubble wrap. And so the fact that I know that Julio Jones is not going to – this is how I'm bringing it back. The fact that I know that Julio Jones is going to be missing preseason and missing some practices, mwah, I love it. He, he, says he's pra- he says he practices like he plays. So why does he need to play against opponents that want to hurt? It makes no sense. Well, no, you want to play against opponents that want to hurt you in the regular season when it counts. That's, but, like, that's exactly right. Yeah, not in the preseason. Whatever, let's move on. Okay. I just saw exactly what you just said. Okay, saying. not quite, but oh, all right, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give that to you. All right, moving on. In the ninth round, Jarek McKinnon after Dak Prescott. McKinnon goes to Rob Waziak. And then Kyle Rudolph to uh, the FFPC Joe Tandem 
of Timothy Skorecki and uh, Richard Clement there. Uh, Kyle Rudolph is their second tight end they drafted. Uh, a guy that is going to be uh, catching passes from Aaron Rodgers this year. It's Marquez Valdez-Scantling as the fourth wide receiver for Darren Armani. Ronald Jones as the first Buccaneers running back drafted tonight. He goes to Rich Rissinger and Lou Ditta. And then rounding things off is the starting tight end for Eric Moody. It is Trey Burton uh, going to him with the final pick of the ninth round tonight. Uh, quarterbacks aside, I look at this round, Dave. Um, has, has your opinion changed on Ronald Jones? Has your opinion changed uh, on the Tampa? No, I don't think we talked about Ronald Jones. I, have we talked about Ronald Jones at all in the PVJ? I don't think we have. I don't, know, who knows? I don't think we have. So has your opinion changed? You know, this is a guy that I know you were high on. You and I both, quite frankly, were high on in Dynasty drafts last year. Yeah. He did not do much. He, he did, did not he catch did less than much. He yeah, did he did, yeah. Uh, he averaged less than two yards a carry. But in the offseason this year, He's been getting a lot of praise from the coaching staff, saying he looks really, really good um, and uh, could have a bounce back year. You look at the Buccaneers' ground game right now, he doesn't have a high bar to jump over. I mean, it's Peyton Barber. Um, Ronald Jones, how successful could he be in a high-powered Bruce Arians offense this year when you look at drafting him at the end of the ninth round? Well, there's two ways to look at it, and we have to talk about Ronald Jones because I feel like I'm answering the same question, but that's okay. Uh, Rojo is not a pass-catching back. He's a, he was very talented. He's a really fast player. He's gained some weight, which sometimes cannot, is not good. I mean, I hope he didn't lose any speed. Hopefully it's muscle. Uh, the coaching staff is talking up. There's two ways to look at it. Either he's looking better, and uh, they did say he was immature last year. That was the one thing Arians said recently. And uh, there's, you can either say they're talking him up to, because he is actually looking better, or they're talking him up because they have no other choice but to talk up. Uh, what the prior people that were there did when they drafted this guy in the second round. They may think he's a colossal boss and he sucks, but they may think Peyton Barber is really, really bad. So they're trying to give him some confidence. So, you know, I actually like, I, I don't mind Rojo. I don't mind going back to, back to the well a little bit. Uh, he didn't hurt me that much last year. I mean, he was uh, pretty cheap, really. Yeah. I didn't draft him much in redraft. I just took him in a few dynasty leagues. So I'm on board with Rojo in that, in that kind, of, kind of range. So that's fine. Ronald Jones going at the 10.02 on average in uh, at FFPC Best Ball over the last three days. One other thing I would just say about Ronald Jones, he's like the neck, he's like the top part of the the break below, like the Latavius Murray type break, right? Uh, Murray, Freeman, and then I feel it drops, and then you have Rojo, the Jalen Samuels, Foreman, McCoy, and Harris types. So I, I think there's a big difference. Two Packer confirms 1265 Lombardi Avenue. Jesus Balky, how can you not know that? I kind of like Jesus Balky as a Kentucky team name this year. You already have too many team names. Well, I still like it. Fair enough. Uh, Let, Lombardi Avenue, that's, that's safe. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's go to the 402 and, and check in here with this caller. Who are we talking to on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour? Hey, Balky, this is Chad. How you doing? How you guys doing? We are doing excellent, Chad. Uh, go, always good to hear from you. Of course, 2008 FFPC main event champion, Chad Schroeder, checking in with us tonight. How are you liking your team as we are through 11 rounds here for you at the three spot? Um, I like the <laughs> construction of it more than I like the players that are on it. <laughs> you had to love James Conner falling to you at, at the 210, though. That, that, you had to be loving life. Not really. I didn't really want to take him that much. Um, <laughs> James, <laughs> really to James Cotter. to the test on these kinds of picks that I don't – That I, I have a lot of players on my team that I don't care for, but I think the construction okay, of it all works. Okay. All right. So let, let's put you to, to, to the test here. I'm going to – you have 11 choices here. Which one is your favorite pick? As we go through your draft tonight, Barkley, Connor, Damian Williams, O.J. Howard, Lockett, Allen Robinson, Jared Cook, Wentz, Matt Ryan, Cortland Sutton, D.D. Westbrook. Which one is your favorite pick, a uh, player that you did enjoy drafting tonight? I think my favorite pick um, is Westbrook at this point in the 11th round. <laughs> that, that tells you what I think of my team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I know you're crapping on your own team, but the thing is, you know, I'm granted, you could not have thought, well, maybe you could have, but you probably weren't aware or thinking that you taking Wentz, you know, then, you know, so you take Wentz. Oh, starting then, the quarterback. Four right. more quarterbacks yeah. going, you're like, oh, dude, this is great. And then Ryan's still there, so you take Ryan. And then a whole, you know, crap load of more quarterbacks go, 
And because all those quarterbacks went, because, you know, 15 picks out of the next 24 were quarterbacks or whatever it was, you get Cortland Sutton in a 10th, and then you get D. Westbrook in the 11th. So kind of your strategy, as our friend George Bush would say, worked out it, pretty it well. It did uh, work out beautifully. Yeah, I think so. It did work out beautifully. My, my strategic game is, is – uh, Far ahead of my playing evaluation game at this point in the season. <laughs> now, Chad, though, you don't, you don't normally – I think I saw somewhere that you say you don't normally start drafting until August 11th. So you're, you're, you're still in, you know, whatever other – Preseason. I don't know what you do other than football. So, you know, whatever other lifestyle things or gambling or, you know, whatever you're doing, you're not doing uh, fantasy as much yet. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's – um. Uh, I've started shutting down a daily fantasy baseball, but that's what I've been doing most of the summer. I don't play full season anymore, um, and it's going well, but it's a it's stressful and it's a grind and it's it's not a lot of fun. So I've been uh, sort of <laughs> giving my brain about a month of hibernation, if you will, um, and getting ready to get back going. Um, I'm doing a couple of appearances in Omaha uh, for a bar owner big sports book in town so th- this is invaluable information you guys have done a great job covering these um so i won't sound like a complete noob here coming up with those things but <laughs> it's but uh, august uh i'm hosting a bar olympics at my house august 10th and then um starting draft in august 11th so Right. It's a quick turnaround. It's a quick turnaround, no question. Uh, Chad, we'll what, see what if that le- works out how that goes on the 11th. <laughs> it might not be the best, best idea, but I'm committed. So. Let me ask you this, Chad. So you, let's say you start your August 11th. You know, but when you look back at your teams every year, you use your after number of teams, whether it's main events or football guys or whatever it is, you look back on your first few drafts and you're like, oh, my God. You know, granted, player valuations, you know, whatever, people are moving up and down. But do you look back and be like, what was I thinking with you, like, first few, kind of like getting your feet wet, you know, every season, right? You're just kind of starting off and, you know, not, not kind of not, you're not into the groove yet. Yeah, I don't, but at the same time, uh, I don't, you know, now these days there's more information on Twitter. You can see more draft boards and stuff, um, but there's no replacement for being, for putting your brand to the, to the test. And that's why I'm still going to do a lot of small drafts uh, starting 11th. And I do a lot more drafts at a time than most people. So I can get caught up in a hurry. And, you know, I, I know who's who are the great players out there. And, um, you know, sometimes I uh, respect their opinion more than I do my own on, on guys. So um, it's just a, putting the whole puzzle together and then getting informed when the big drafts get, get there. Yeah, and we will be looking forward to that, obviously, with uh, FFPC main, address, uh, main event drafts starting in just a few weeks, and, and obviously the Planet Hollywood live events uh, starting up shortly thereafter, leading up into week one of the NFL season. I know Chad will be participating in a lot of those uh, big drafts that, that we have going on there, as well as the main event, too. Chad, thanks so much for uh, chiming in tonight. Good luck the rest of the way um, in not only your pros versus Joe's draft, but all your drafts. I see. I know you're coming off a big 2018 season. Wish you the, the best of luck in, in 2019. And, uh, again, thanks so much for joining the, the program tonight, dude. All right. Take care. Have a good rest of your evening, folks. Thank you so much. That's Chad Schroeder. You can always follow him on Twitter at Chad S C H 23, 19 time full season national champ and uh, the inaugural winner of the uh, FFPC main event way back in the day. Uh, It's been a while since, uh, since that's happened. What is this year 11, Dave? Am I correct in saying, or is it year 12? It's year 12 Uh, of the FFPC. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, perfect. Well, at least we're we're, you know, we're, we're not nostalgic or anything too much. No, nah, not too much. When did you start with this uh, great firm? Were you with the FFPC? Yeah, I, I was not a I I was an independent contractor <laughs> for the first year, and I did not like it because I remember that first year I was not out in Vegas. I was back right here at home. And well, first of all, you botched it by having your kid on the weekend. So no, that was no. Listen, I no. Hold on. For, okay, couple of things there. Let's just unpack this. Number one, um, I was working for the FFPC long before my firstborn was born. Yes, we Number two, my kid was born over a month early. So I scheduled this out properly, and it's his damn fault 
that he couldn't put up with his mother anymore, and he had to get some separation from her. <laughs> oh, uh, I remember Lance Turvis when when we um because we do a lot of work Saturday night. He just kept talking. That's what he said. Yeah, he no, he didn't, he didn't say time. that. He didn't say that. But we sent out. You know, we do a lot of work um, uh, Saturday night and then early Sunday morning of inputting lineups. Now we that, that's we we've, we've automated a, a certain amount of that um, over the years. But back in the day. Um, you and I were still working on, on Saturday night and Sunday morning, getting everything squared away. And then we had to send yeah. out an email early Sunday morning yeah, starting starting because, yeah, because my wife went into labor and I had to find an emergency flight home. Yeah. I'm well aware of it because yeah. I was out until four in the morning. Right. Yeah. I was still drunk and a drunk, drunk over whatever right. the hell you call yeah. it. No. And yeah. then you're telling me the story and I'm like, dude, that sucks for you. And I'm like, well, dude, that really sucks for me more than right. for you almost. So then, so then, what happened was you sent out this email saying, "Hey, the lineups are going to be a little bit delayed. We had, we had, you know, Balky had a family emergency." And then I, I we posted the photo of my kid being born. Um, it was early Monday morning. It had, ended up happening. Um, and we posted a photo that you could have saved for the game. I could have, yeah. That, that was that was the gist of it. What a bummer. And Lance, and I'll tell you the Breaking Bad story uh, shortly. We'll get back to the draft, I promise. But Lance Service at Sport Betting Man said. Lucas, who's my son, he's like, Lucas just had to come out for week one of the NFL ah. season. Just couldn't wait anymore, and I'll never forget that. That was funny. Yeah, the two Monday night games. But, I, but I ended up, I, the, 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 and I'll, you know, plenty of listeners have heard this story, so I'll be pretty brief on it, but I missed the last flight directly from Vegas to Appleton oh, by about 20 was, minutes, and then I had to fly to Atlanta and then back to Appleton. Literally flew around the country. I got back. I was fi- finally in the hotel room at, or the hotel room, the hospital room at about 8.30 at night. My wife was getting the epidural and not uh, not a fan of, of seeing me uh, at that point because she was, <laughs> she was in some pain. Kind of like no. And um, Breaking Bad, uh, a show that you and I both liked, was yeah. going off the air at that time. And uh, they were counting down to the final few episodes. It was probably the third last episode. And I missed it because I was in the in the airplane. And so I was up with my wife, you know, holding her hand and, and you, you know, know being nice to her. Can I interrupt you a little bit? Sure. Were you able to watch some games on the way to and from a little bit, right? So you had well, to- no, here's, here's the thing. I was, I mean, yeah, I did. I thought we bought the internet. For well, it, no, right? like, I don't want my wife, she's not going to listen to this, but yeah, I was watching it. But the thing <laughs> is, like, I was connected um, to the internet and I was, I was Facebook messaging um, her uh, sister-in-law and her friend yeah. um, who was in the, in the room. And then I lost internet on the last flight with about 40 minutes to go on the flight. And I'm thinking to myself, I could be a father right now and I don't even know it, <laughs> you know, because this could, could have been born. Now, thankfully it wasn't. But the getting back to the Breaking Bad thing, right, I missed it on Sunday night um, because I was, I was in the airplane. And, you know, I'm with my wife and, you know, we're kind of figuring things out and she's not in labor yet or whatever. And then I'm watching, the replay comes on AMC of the Breaking Bad. Now, I don't know. Nice. Yeah, and I don't know. How I, many meters dilated? I, hope, I, I, I can't remember at this was, point. By the way, it wasn't meters. It was <laughs> yeah. meters. She was four <laughs> meters dilated, Dave. Then they, uh, they, uh, oh, sorry, sent, they sent her to ICU right <laughs> after that. Um, I, I hope I'm not spoiling anything. But this is the episode where there is the shootout in the oh, yeah. desert. Or what's his name? The bald guy got killed. Um, yes. What's his name? Uh, Asac Schrader. Oh, Hank Schrader. Yeah. Um, and you didn't see a tough shit. You should right, watch yeah. it. So, so I'm halfway through this episode, and this is the replay that's on at like three in the morning. And I'm halfway through, and it goes to commercial. The nurse comes in, and she checks my wife out. She's like, "Okay, well, I think we could start pushing if you're ready." And my wife, I'm like, "Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, you can't do this now." <laughs> How much longer? Fifteen minutes? Does, no, it's about a half hour. We're halfway okay. through, yeah. and my wife hesitated, and she said, uh, "I, I don't know." And I said, "You know what? She's not ready yet." Uh, let's, give it let's give it a little bit. We'll <laughs> we'll see what happens. You know, whatever. And 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 the nurse is like, okay, that's fine. And I'm like, oh, perfect. And then she leaves like right as it's starting back from commercial. I'm like, oh, this is meant to be right here. So I ended up seeing the episode. My kid got born at 5:30 uh, in the morning. He was a he was a little underweight, but um, all was well after that. And so it was it was a fun that's night. Hilarious. Yeah. So it's very exciting. My my second kid's wife or my second kid's wife. My second kid's birth was not nearly. As, uh, as stressful as that one was. Getting back to the draft. I promise you we would do <laughs> that it. That was great. Ten oh one. Josh Allen to Eric Moody as his backup quarterback to Deshaun Watson. Jalen Samuels right after that, the number four running back drafted by Rich Risinger and Lou Ditta. Geronimo Allison for the second straight night, Dave. We get the Packers stack of receivers here. Valdez Scantling in the ninth. 
And then Allison in the tenth to Darren Armani. Maybe he saw that last night and said, mm, I got to have that. Ben Roethlisberger as the backup quarterback to Patrick Mahomes here for Skorecki and Clement. Jimmy Garoppolo backing up Kyler Murray for Rob Waziak from the fantasy footballers. Kirk Cousins is the backup quarterback for uh, the uh, uh, for Chris Carlson's team for Dak Prescott. And um, I'm sorry, hang on one second. We got some technical difficulties here, and they're solved. Philip Rivers. Backing up Lamar Jackson to Bob Harris at Football Diehards, as he now has two quarterbacks on his team. Marvin Jones, the one, two, three, four, fifth receiver drafted by Cowart and Yarborough here tonight in the 10th round. Larry Fitzgerald, the number three receiver drafted by Mike Nazarek. So this is interesting. He doesn't take a third receiver until round 10. How will it end up? Stay tuned and find out. Cortland Sutton off the board to Chad Schroeder here uh, as his number three receiver. So again, two uh, long time, you know, Mike Nazarek is, a, is technically a pro in this competition. He is a former FFPC league, uh, main event league champion, so he knows his way around these drafts. Yeah, Mike does play FFPC every single year. He's a super loyal, outstanding, awesome player. Yeah, and a, and a guy that you don't really want to see in your league because he's been very successful. So both these guys don't take their third receiver until round 10. Again, best ball, but still. Mark Andrews, Dave, who I think I said in the chat room earlier, I'm really, really starting to like him. Josh Hornsby gets him as his backup tight end. And then Deshaun Jackson off the board to Dave Sherman with the final pick of the 10th round. Okay, so that is the 10th round. Let's go through the 11th here, and then we'll kind of wrap things up and, and, and look at each of these uh, teams. Tyrell Williams, uh, a favorite of yours, apparently, as far as where he's going. And FFPC best ballers are taking him currently – uh, at the 1403. Now, Dave Sherman uh, reached out and grabbed him here at the 11th to make sure he got him on his team. The Raiders are going to have a little bit of a different look this year as they have added Antonio Brown. They have added Josh Jacobs. Um, you look at this squad. I just want to ask you here, as, as, as Tyrell Williams joins the Raiders as well, what is it about Williams uh, on the Raiders this year that has you liking him given his draft spot? Well, I mean, Derek Carr is going to throw for 30x number of yards. 3,800, does that seem right? Sure. Okay. That seems all right. Uh, you know, Antonio Brown has command a lot of looks, but Tyrell Williams is in his prime. He's moved from one team to the other. He's definitely number two receiver there. Darren Waller is their tight end, so he's not going to command many looks. I think that Williams, is, he's just a solid player. And because Antonio Brown's going to command a lot of coverage, I think that Williams will get a, get a lot of looks. Having said that, I, I think I would have, I probably would have looked at, I don't know, to take Williams that much sooner than his ADP. I think, I mean, because of the fact that I knew his ADP, I would have probably waited until his 12th, 13th turn and taken a shot at him. Where is he getting picked now? 14, 13? 14.03 for Tyrell Williams. Yeah, there's probably a 75% chance Williams was open for you in the 12, 13 turn, so I've probably gone somewhere else with that thing. Okay, so so you like him, you don't love him. But I mean, having said that, I don't, I'm not a big DJX fan, so I would have probably taken Williams over DJX. I like the D.D. Westbrook, I think Emmanuel Sanders in best ball is kind of an interesting pick. Yeah. He's, uh, he's supposedly doing pretty well, and uh, there's no one else really in town there. So uh, he's worth a shot, I think, Wade. Uh, I like this, you know. I, I mean, obviously Sutton, but I mean beyond him. Right. I, Josh Hornsby at the at the 11.02 here tonight, Dave, takes a, a guy that, that I'm, I'm really becoming a fan of. He actually back-to-back -back picks of, of guys I'm really warming up to. Uh, Mark Andrews, then Damian Harris, who's normally going in the early 10th. I was going to say, it seems late. Yeah, he gets him in the early 11th tonight. I like that pick. I actually like Chad Schroeder's pick of D.D. Westbrook at the 11.03 tonight. That makes some sense, too. Emmanuel Sanders to Mike Nazarick uh, right after that. That is uh, his fourth receiver. So he goes Fitz and Sanders to try to shore up that receiver position. Deontay Foreman right after that. Did we talk about him earlier to Cowart and Yarborough? And then Jordan Reed backing up Travis Kelsey as his number two tight end. That's football diehards Bob Harris. Dallas Goddard is the starting tight end for Chris Carlson. LaShawn McCoy right after that is the number four running back for Rob Waziak. A couple of tight ends here. Boy, this is really the tight end route. Delaney Walker to uh, Skorecki and Clement. Jack Doyle right after that to Darren Armani is his number two tight end. Ito Smith. Uh, all you can eat here for uh, Rich Rissinger and Lou Ditta as their number five running back, Greg Olson, backing up Trey Burton for Fantasy Data's Eric Moody to end the 11th round. Dave? Yes, I agree with that. No, I, I thought you had a point that you wanted well, to Well, the make. 11th round is that, that tight end round. So if you only had one tight end, or if you were team five and had zero, and you decided not to take one, you made a mistake. So I think that no And that was Carlson? You're, you're pointing yeah. out? Are you calling yeah. him out? You're calling out yeah. the tickler? 
No, Ray Coward from Tyson Yarborough. No. Yeah, Team Five. They don't have a tight oh, end. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. In yeah. round eleven, they're still. Everyone else starts taking their second tight end, and they're still sitting there with zero, and they and they draft other other players. I I think that's not not what you want to be doing. I think that's not ideal. However, they do have a certain advantage at both receiver and running back, which you'll get into in a little bit yeah, here. That's, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we will talk about it. You're right. One of those things that, I, you know, it, it, it still seems like this is year 12 of the FFPC and still the, the philosophy of drafting tight ends and how many tight ends and when to draft them is – I, argu- it's unknown. Arguably the most polarizing conversation. I mean, you go on FFPC Twitter, and there's a ton of people arguing, you got to get an elite one. you got to have two after X rounds. you you got to have three after X rounds. Oh, you don't need to take one until this round. You don't need to take one until you, you have this. This is what your roster construction looks like. It is so polarizing. The conversation is it, it's never-ending. Um, it, you know, it's, and, and I listen, I don't want to equate this to this. I am not equating it to this. But it's sort of like um, the abortion laws in this country. You know, it, it, it's always sort of like a polarizing political topic. And it seems like there, there, there's a huge portion on one end of the spectrum. There's a huge portion on the other end of the spectrum. There's a few in the middle. And it, it, I don't think we're ever going to get like a firm answer on where it's going to go. And just in, in that same regard, I don't think we're going to get a firm answer on the right way to draft tight ends. We've seen we we brought Don Matter up earlier. We've seen teams totally ignore it and win a six-figure grand prize. We've seen teams load up on them and win a six-figure grand prize. So I think there's a lot of different ways to build your team, and I think that's what makes this so in, enjoyable. And for anybody who is listening for the first time, who is checking out an FFPC draft for the first time, the starting lineup in the FFPC: one quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, a tight end, a kicker, a defense, and then two flexes. So you could start four running backs, four receivers, three tight ends, however you want to do it. Tight ends get a point and a half per catch in this format as well. So that is the way you're looking at it, and this is why some of these teams end up looking the way that they do tonight. All right, we do have uh, roughly a little bit less than a half hour in the program tonight. Let's get into some team analysis, and and then we'll put a uh, a bow on the pros versus Joes this year, uh, as this is our final broadcast. Of the uh, of the fantasy football season for the PBJ, so yeah, I'm sure you will. Well, let's try to we'll try to fix that, Dave, with our show on Friday. <laughs> More to come on that. Oh, yeah. Dave Sherman was drafting first tonight. The running backs: Christian McCaffrey, Melvin Gordon, Carryon Johnson, Austin Eckler. Uh, receivers: DJ Moore, Christian Kirk, Deshaun Jackson, Tyrell Williams. Tight ends: Eric Ebron, T.J. Hawkinson. Quarterbacks: Russell Wilson and Jared Goff. Now, bear in mind, we're not quite halfway through this draft, so there is a lot of uh, ways that he can still add to the depth on this team. But I think as long as, you know, even the fact that he gets Eckler with Melvin Gordon, I think that mitigates the Gordon risk a little bit. So I like what he did there. Uh, the receivers are a, a little bit of a question mark, but more and Kirk could break out. Deshaun Jackson's looking great with the Eagles. And we already talked uh, about Tyrell Williams earlier. Uh, I'm a little concerned with Ebron as the number one tight end, but I like Hawkinson as the backup uh, tight end here for, uh, for Sherman. And uh, I love the quarterback. So a competitive team drafted by the FFPC veteran here. Yeah, McCaffrey with Gordon and with Eckler, I think it actually works out really nicely for him. Uh, and the carry on Johnson pick, I know some people are, you know, poo pooing Johnson moving up because uh, what's his name? We don't even have to talk about him because he's so terrible. Moves up from, you know, he, he is moving up now. Carry on Johnson moving up to an early third round pick. Uh, I, I still think it's a nice pick. Who's who's so terrible? I'm sorry. Uh, Bill, uh, not the guy they cut. Oh, Theo Riddick? Theo Riddick, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. He's so, he's so unimportant that no, he's not even worth talking I about. I understand, yes. But, you know, D.J. Moore is your one. I love D.J. Moore, but he's been, like, generally speaking, the 18th or 19th receiver taken as yeah. your one. That's a little bit problematic, right? So, you know, you need a breakout out of one guy. And so let's look at your next player, Christian Kirk. Okay, he hasn't really kind of done nothing. So you need a breakout. But he could break out. Yes, he could break out. The right. point is you need a breakout out of two guys. So you have D.J. who's getting older, and he's kind of a, you know, flash, speed guy. And then you, you have Tyrell Williams. So you only have four tight ends, and you're taking defenses. I, 
I find that to be a little bit of a questionable strategy at the receiver position. I love everything else about his team. Though. Right. He does have the number one defense, the only defense off the board in the Bears at the final pick of the 12th round here. Josh Hornsby from Roto Grinders, FantasyADHD.com. David Johnson, James White, Miles Sanders, Damian Harris, Justice Hill at running back. Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, Robbie Anderson, Michael Gallup at receiver. Hunter Henry, Mark Andrews at tight end. Cam Newton and Jameis Winston at quarterback. I feel like this has been a recurring theme for me, Dave. Uh, but I'm after the top three receivers, I, I'm concerned at the depth, and he could certainly build that up, but I'm not a Michael Gallup guy. However, I will say this, there's a lot of explosive players on Josh Hornsby's team at every position. Well, I mean, the difference between Team 1 and Team 2 is that his top three receivers are Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, and Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson's a you know, pretty solid number one. Right. Jeff. And he's semi-proven. He, you know, he's not a breakout guy. He, he's a player that you expect some production from. David Johnson, White, Sanders. Sanders has up, upside and downside. Uh, Damian Harris, great value. Henry and Andrews is a really, really solid tight end combo, and uh, Newton and Winston good, are really good. Right. Uh, overall, pretty solid team. I, I, you know, the argument about David Johnson as a two pick, I mean, that people are going to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> there, actually, I went on Josh's uh, Twitter feed, um, and and some. <laughs> Somebody said, hey, good draft so far, but why David Johnson over Barkley at two? And, and Josh retweeted it and with the comment, I like David Johnson better. <laughs> I mean, that's right. all you need to know right there. You can't beat that argument. You cannot beat that argument. Well, why? Because <laughs> I like it better. Yeah, well, there you go. All right, that's cool. It. Yeah. Chad Schroeder, let's move on to see what the uh, 2008 FFPC main event champ did uh, from the three spot. Barkley, James Conner, Damian Williams. Deion Lewis and Justin Jackson here. Uh, Tyler Lockett, Allen Robinson, Cortland Sutton, and D.D. Westbrook at receiver. Tight ends are O.J. Howard and Jared Cook, Carson Wentz, and Matt Ryan at quarterback. So, Dave, I look at this squad. I think, I think the time, you know, I'm not a big O.J. Howard guy, but, you know, the fact that he got him in the fourth round, I think was good value. I, um, Jared Cook there uh, also uh, helping out the tight end depth. We'll see what he does going forward here. Uh, and then you have uh, Wentz and Ryan. I like the quarterbacks. Running backs are solid. Receivers, we'll see what happens there, but there's some breakout potential for, for Chad Schroeder. Yeah, I think I covered Chad's team a little bit uh, earlier, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stand by what I said. I really like the Cortland Sutton and the uh, D.E. Westbrook pick. Right. Overall, solid team, actually. I think he's done well for himself. Uh, yeah, and the fact that you have Justin Jackson, we'll see what happens there with the Melvin Gordon situation. I always like getting those mid-range uh, or mid-round pass-catching running backs, and Deion Lewis certainly fits the bill there. You can't get much better than those top three running backs that he goes with in the first three rounds. So we'll see what Chad does here in the final, uh, the second half of this draft, no question. FFMastermind.com's Michael Nazarek, uh, his running backs, Alvin Kamara, Philip Lindsay, Jordan Howard, Kalen Bellage, receivers, Keenan Allen, Kenny Galladay, Larry Fitzgerald, Emmanuel Sanders, and John Brown. Tight ends, George Kittle, Austin Hooper. Quarterbacks are Andrew Luck and Drew Brees. Uh, he just takes Jason Witten as his number three tight end here at the 1409 as well. So the, the tight ends are really, really good. Uh, the, um, the running backs, I think, when you look at Kamara and Lindsey, I think you could do a lot worse there. And then you, you pepper in Jordan Howard, who we're not the biggest fans of, but he should get a lot of touches, uh, you know, maybe not targets, but touches for sure. And then Kalen Balazs, who's been rising up draft boards. He's the number one in the Dolphins you, offense. You don't see um, <laughs> him take a, uh, excuse me, a wide receiver until the 10th round after he goes with Allen and Galladay. But I like the depth there. Fitz, Sanders, and John Brown, I mean, that's, that's a good best ball guy right there. You're, you're seeing the veteran experience of Michael Nazarek shown through here in his draft construction. Yeah, I actually like Nazarek's team. He spaced things out pretty well, right? I mean, when you take, even though he took Cooper, again, I probably would not have gone with Cooper there. That's kind of fine. But he took Cooper, he got Kittle, so he's got really good, really, really good tight ends. I mean, really good. And for receivers, you have know, Allen and Galladay, but then he ends up getting that veteran depth. Fifth, Stan, you know, Emmanuel Sanders, John Brown. I mean, I'm not a big John Brown fan, but if he doesn't have that sickle cell trait going on, it's not a problem. He's a, he's a player. And the Cam Velocic is, a, is, a, is a kind of a super value. So his running backs are a little bit, running back depth is a tad bit weak. Right. Uh, with Kamara and Lindsey, that's two starters. I mean, what what more do you want? That's pretty good. I like the team a lot, actually. Yeah, and, and we'll uh, we'll talk more about this uh, team later on. I, uh, spoiler alert as far as a future guest on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, but we'll get into more of that with Michael Nazarek. Uh, Ray Cowart and uh, Tyson Yarbrough had the fifth pick tonight. Here's what they did from that slot. Todd Gurley, Aaron Jones, Mark Ingram, Dante Foreman, Jamal Williams. Uh, receivers are DeAndre Hopkins, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry, Sterling Shepard, Marvin Jones. Tight end is Noah Fant, 
Mitchell Trubisky and Andy Dalton are the quarterbacks. So, Dave, here's the thing. Love the running back depth. I'm, I'm a fan of the receivers, um, but it came at a price. And that price was Noah Fant is your tight end in round 13. And he needs to make sure that he gets a third quarterback here coming up pretty quick. I, I, or I should say they, not he. Right. I, I find it, I, I, again, running backs, receivers are fantastic. And like you said, I don't really mind, truthfully, I don't really mind Trubisky and Dalton and let's say they grab, you know, XYZ, some other player that may emerge. And I, there's, there's a few, right, a couple. Right. Um, so the quarterbacks are okay, but with, if fans is your number one, and players like Witten are going off the board now, I just feel like you, you've blown the tight end position right. to, to the point you cannot come back from it. So I feel like this team, in, in spite of the fact that everything else is good, is, is done for. Oh, really? I do. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, my, a rookie tight end is your number one. I, and there's, what are you looking at, Gerald Everett and some other crap. I mean, what else are you going to do? I mean, there's not... There's not yeah, a lot the fail save Darren Waller's off the board too, which is yeah, right. unfortunate. So, you, so I mean, you're looking at so what, you're looking at uh, guys getting hurt and so on and for your right. number two and three tight ends. I just feel like that that's it's just not happening. Um, one thing I would really mention real quick is uh, teams one, three, five, and seven, all Joes, all FFPC players, right? All in their first four rounds have three running backs. I thought that was. Yeah, ah, I didn't notice that until you pointed that out. But good eyes on uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, he's not wearing glasses, so that is the eagle eye of the dizzle tonight. That's why he's the patron saying of fantasy football. I'm not drinking white claws either. That's, and that's part that, of it. See, that's my issue. <laughs> Let's go to football diehards uh, Bob Harris here at the sixth spot. Uh, Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, Darius Geis, Tevin Coleman, Naheem Hines at running back, Adam Thielen, Brandon Cooks, Corey Davis at receiver, uh, Travis Kelsey, Jordan Reed, Tyler Eifert at tight end, Lamar Jackson, Phillip Rivers, and Derek Carr at quarterback. You look at Bob's squad, Dave, and I think what stands out to me is Two of our check marks are ticked off here. He has three quarterbacks by the end of round 13. He has three tight ends by the round uh, end of round 14. He has good running back depth. Where's the weakness? Got to build up that receiver depth after going Thielen, Cooks, and Corey Davis, and nothing since then. That is where this team, uh, his success is going to be determined to, because I think he did a very good job at all the other positions. Yeah, and, and the thing is, this draft's going a little bit more, more slowly than the other drafts, so we're still in the 15th round. Remember that one draft we were talking about the kickers? We're like, oh, let's go through the 19th round. Right. Here's the kickers over there. Yeah, they, they all, they, listen, they're all different. Yeah, they are all different. I think, you know, there's just still some receivers out there. Somebody give Harris some credit, but he can go and like, snatch a few up. Although my, my boy has all about the 14, 12 to Dave Sherman, great pick. Yeah. Actually, Dave Sherman, now looking back on his team, because he has DJ Moore, Kirk. Deshaun Watson, Tyrell Williams, Isabella, and Humphreys. That actually does. Adam Humphreys is underrated. I think so, too. I, I feel like the Tyrell Williams, Isabella, I think those two together. I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I, I like both of them. Yeah. So then I instantly like this team a lot. And more. you like Hawkinson, too, I think, is the number two tight end this I, year. I, yeah. I do. I mean, he's, an, he's you know, both Ebron and Hawkinson, both drafted by the Lions, both top ten picks. Right. Uh, now on different teams, but uh, Hawkinson's in a, a pretty elite talent. Anyway. For the uninitiated, they might have think that Dave Gerzak partnered with Dave Sherman tonight. Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> I know. DJ Moore, this is like a Christian team. Kirk, I'm Russell gonna, Wilson, Tyrell take, Williams, no, Hawkinson, Isabella. I would have not taken Ebron, though, but that's all right. Okay, well. I mean, there's a lot of picks in the last he won, he won that argument with <laughs> you, apparently. Yeah, the Desert Snake and I are, uh, we both have the same first name and a lot of the same things. From right, the, back to Bob Harris. Yeah, well, no, well, that's about all I had to say with Bob Harris, unless you had anything else. No, yeah. I actually, I truthfully, I actually really like the team in spite of the fact that you only have three, uh, hey, three receivers right now. The draft philosophy question here, Dave. If you are going to be weak heading into the second round, or excuse me, the second half of a 28-round draft, what position do you want to be weak at? You cannot say kicker or defense. Where do I want to be weak? Where do you want, if you have to be weak at one position, what's the one position that you feel like you can build up enough depth to, to make your team um, not only competitive, but a team that can win the whole thing? Uh, I don't know. Is it a receiver? Okay, I mean, it's kind of that question is, is a little bit of a leading question. And it's, I'm it's trying built, to, yeah. It's built, it's built for me to say receiver. It's, it's by design, Dave. Yeah, so your question is, it's like, <laughs> it's like a crappy poll that was you know, initiated by the Come on, Trump hold on, Republican. come on. It's like, oh, hey, did Donald Trump do this or that, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that at my if I have two good quarterbacks, I think of Sacrificing a third one is fine. Yeah. If I have two good tight ends, sacrificing a third one there is fine. Sure. Um, so I don't think that necessarily a receiver is not is the answer. Okay. I'll, I'll All right. Go. All right. So the, I will say this: it's tough. The later after like uh, right about now, I think around fourteen, 
the running backs get really bad. I mean, it just gets to be like, okay, I can't even, like, I can't pick anyone. Either. It's all handcuffs and opportunity at this point. No, it's actually below that. It's, it's, it's now it's like the handcuffs and opportunity are gone. It's like, you know, Gus Edwards. I guess, I guess okay, so like, dreams. Yeah, it's like crap. So it's, so it's like Eric Darwin Thompson or uh, yeah or, Bruce you know, Anderson yeah right Bruce Anderson yeah. the guy behind the guy if you're right. if you're talking swingers level running back yeah that should be something a team name or whatever uh, if you're the guy behind the guy you don't want to be drafting the guy behind exactly the guy. yeah no question all right from the desert snake to uh, the football diehard to the tickler here with uh, Ezekiel Elliott Joe Mixon Leonard Fournette uh, Rashad Penny and Carlos Hyde our Chris Carlson's running backs Julian Edelman. Cooper Cup, Dante Pettis, Curtis Samuel, and Devin Funches at receiver. Uh, tight ends, Dallas Goddard and Darren Waller. And then the quarterbacks, Prescott, Kirk Cousins, and Sam Darnold. Boy, I like those quarterbacks. That's a good trio right there. I'm questioning a little bit waiting until round 11 to draft your starter. Again, this is not the first time we've seen Dallas Goddard as the number one tight end for uh, a team in the pros versus Joe's where he's not the number one tight end on his own team. Um, I, I, you know, the fact that he started off with three high volume running backs, that should work in his favor. Um, Edelman in, in, is going to be good. Pettis is certainly a breakout candidate. I like Curtis Samuel. Devin Funches in the 15th. I mean, say what you will about him, but he should be catching passes from Andrew Luck. And then um, uh, we'll see how, how fast Cooper Cup rebounds. But I think this, this uh, squad sort of comes down, Dave, to wide receiver help. And if he can if he can catch lightning in a bottle here with maybe a third or maybe a fourth tight end. Yeah, if Goddard gets enough targets or if Waller emerges, he could be in pretty good shape. You know, it's funny because uh, he took crap. He actually, I felt like he ran the quarterbacks kind of properly. Not that I mean he could have gotten better, of course, right? But because he did wait, he still ended up getting Prescott, Cousins, and Darnold. He pushed the quarterbacks. He took Darnold, and he knew he kind of had to get a third one. So that right. was a really good decision. Yep. For him. Um, you know, the first eight picks are, out, you know, pretty outstanding. I can't complain. Are you a Pettis guy, just curiously? I'm really not, but I mean, okay. it's fine if you like it. Just fine. number three, whatever. Okay. No, that's fine. I mean, I, when you have, you know, four backs and four receivers and eight rounds, they're going to look pretty good overall. Right. Uh, but he does need some – if Zach Ertz gets, gets hurt, holy crap, this team could be amazing. <laughs> it really I mean, does. It's yeah. So yeah, I'm just looking at that now. That, that does look really good if that's the, the scenario that presents itself. Uh, FantasyFootballers.com, Rob Roz, uh, Waziak here. Let's talk about his team, a.k.a. Team RB. Tariq Cohen, David Montgomery, Jarek McKinnon, LaShawn McCoy, Matt Breida, Devin Singletary, Adrian Peterson, wide receivers Tyreek Hill, Antonio Brown, Robert Woods, Kiki QT, uh, tight ends Evan Ingram and Jimmy Graham, quarterbacks Kyler Murray and Jimmy Garoppolo. It's weird that I'm saying this. I think this is sort of a balanced team, Dave, and what I mean by saying that is he gets four receivers within the first seven rounds, Three of them should be pretty high volume. Maybe Robert Woods could be the fourth. He gets Evan Engram and Jimmy Graham on the same team, um, which, which could pay dividends. I like the Murray-Garoppolo pairing, and it's going to be a question of if, if, he can, if he can get one of these running backs to pan out, if Adrian Peterson is the guy in Washington, if Devin Singletary becomes the bell cow in Buffalo. Um, and even if he doesn't, he still has McCoy here. I don't know about the Jarek McKinnon pick in the ninth round, but you obviously see what the strategy here is with, with Waziak when he gets those – those four receivers early, now he's pounding the running back position. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be a slave to ADP, but I'm going to have to mention this. Tyreek Hill, Antonio Brown, Evan Ingram, Robert Woods were all reaches. Everyone, every single one was way over ADP. Cohen and Montgomery, maybe not. Montgomery might have been a value. QT is, an, is, an, is a reach for ADP. Uh, McKinnon in the ninth round, ADP reach. So, when you have all those so-called reaches, when QTs are number four, but then you're punting running back, it becomes a little bit problematic. So I, I don't, no offense, don't care for the way this team turned out because you reached on pretty much all of your you know, super important positions. So not, I'm not a fan. Okay. All right. You're not a fan of that squad. We'll see how it develops over the course of the second half of this draft. It is Team Gossamer at the uh, nine pick tonight, Dave. That is Timothy Skarecki and Richard Clement. Here's what they did with their nine slot. Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, Latavius Murray, and Chris Thompson at uh, running back. Receivers are Devontae Adams, Alshon Jeffries, Sammy Watkin, uh, Golden Tate, DK Metcalf, and Kenny Still. And then you have, uh, I'm, I'm abusing it. I know it's last night. Just give it to me. Zach Ertz, Kyle Rudolph, and Delaney Walker at tight end. Patrick Mahomes and Ben Roethlisberger at quarterback. He needs a third quarterback, but I like the top two. I like the tight end combination here that he got. And, you know, say what you will about these receivers, but 
I mean, Alshon Jeffrey is still going to put up points. Sammy Watkins should still put up points with that, you know, he gets the hook up there with, with Patrick Mahomes. Golden Tate, I thought, was a good value in the 12th. We'll see what happens with DK Metcalf. I've always been a Kenny Stills guy. I guess the, the question for me is how many passes are these early round running backs going to catch from with, with Henry and Carson and Murray? You get the pass catcher with Chris Thompson, but that guy's no stranger to the training table. So the running backs for me are the question mark for Gossamer's team here with Skorecki and Clement. Yeah, you know, normally I would really, I would generally kind of hate a team that would take Ertz and then Mahomes. Uh, I thought the Mahomes spec was kind of a reach, but he 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 accounted for himself pretty well in my opinion. With I feel like I, I look at the rest of his picks, like almost all of them, and I feel like I can explain them all to myself. I'd be like, okay, Henry the fourth, Carson the fifth, that's cool. He needs a receiver, Jeffrey, Jeffries, Watt, Watkins, and take his Murray in the, you know, in the eighth round is a nice value, and then Ertz with Rudolph solid in Mahomes, and then you get Big Ben, and then you get Delaney Walker as your third tight end, and then Golden Tate, you know, with the suspension, and then Chris Thompson catching passes, DK Metcalf, who sucks, but he's run up the one, start on a route, and Kenny Stills caught two touchdowns in practice the other day. DK I mean, that's pretty good, right? I mean, it's pretty, that actually turns out, if, 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 if all you put all that crap together, it turns out to be a pretty good piece of, you know, a pretty good suit. For what it's worth, DK Metcalf can run one route. Yeah, if you go or the stop. Right. Can he run the stop? <laughs> I don't know. If he, I don't think he can run the stop. I think he can run the go. And then you just pick Jalen Richard over there, catching passes. Uh, Jalen Richard. Whatever. Oh, is that, where, is that what we're doing? We're doing Richard? Yeah. So it's... Jalen Richard. Yeah, Jalen. Why is it Richard? Is he French? I don't know. Does he look French to you? I, he doesn't look French to me, but maybe he is. <laughs> uh, Darren Armani from FantasyMojo.com. Check out all the great stuff that he has there. Uh, and the godfather of the Pros is Joe's competition, the guy that throws this whole thing together each and every year, drafting from the 10 spot tonight. Le'Veon Bell, Marlon Mack, Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, Malcolm Brown, uh, receivers Julio Jones, T.Y. Hilton, Calvin Ridley, Marcus Veldes, Scantling, Geronimo Allison, Anthony Miller, tight ends Vance McDonald, Jack Doyle, Mike Kosicki, Baker Mayfield, and Tom Brady at the quarterback. I think uh, Darren Armani did two things really good. One, he paid attention to where these guys are going in the previous five uh, Pros vs. Joe's drafts, and I think he put together a very balanced squad here. I like the receivers. I like the running backs. I think he did a good job getting three tight ends by round 13. I, we'll see if he gets a third quarterback here, but Mayfield and Brady is certainly a good start. So, Dave, I like this team. You know what's funny is, I mean, first of all, he, he really crushed it, especially ADT wise Mack and Hilton. Yeah, Mack and Hilton was fantastic. I, I thought the Ridley pick was solid. Henderson pick again good. You can pass it down, whether you like him or hate him, it's a good pick. Right. And then, so then, okay, you take Mayfield in the eighth, and then I'm like, he's coming around in the ninth, and there's this huge QB run. I just, I could not, there's no way I could have done what he did by taking MVS, ignoring quarterback. Right. And then taking Allison right after that, which actually was a, it's a shrewd combination. Packer stack, yeah. Yeah, Packer stack. And then so he, he, in my opinion, again, this is at the time, he blows that, right? And then so then he, Ignores it. And then after that, and I would be so pissed if I were him, Big Ben, you know, Garoppolo, Cousins, and Rivers all I'm like, oh, my God, whatever, you know. And then in the 11th round, he still passes on quarterback, takes Jack Doyle, right. and then still gets Brady. Yeah. So even though he only has two quarterbacks, I feel like he did, did fine. I felt like I would have drafted so much differently there, and I feel like he did way better yeah. than I could have done Given the, the stressors of that situation. Well, he's, he's, a, he's a shrewd drafter. He's very nice job. He's yeah. way better than I would have done right there. And a lot of Colts on this team. Marlon Mack, T.Y. Hilton, Jack Doyle. We'll see how that ends That's up. That's a good going. thing. That's a good thing. Uh, Rich Rissinger and Lou Ditta were the 11th spot tonight. Devontae Freeman, Josh Jacobs, Ronald Jones, Jalen Samuels, Ito Smith, Kareem Hunt at running back. Odell Beckham, Michael Thomas, Mike Williams, A.J. Green, Traquan Smith, and Jameson Crowder at receiver. David Njoku and Chris Herndon at tight end. Quarterback is uh, Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford. David, this is a hot take. This might be my favorite team. Oh, all right. It might be my favorite team. I, it's tough for Except me to find. Except your boyfriend, Devonta Freeman. Yeah, that's, that helps it. And um, I just, I, it, I'm struggling to find a, a weakness. You know, A.J. Green is your four. You still get Traquan Smith and Jamison Crowder late. Uh, I guess I'd like to, maybe the weakness is depth that tight end with Njoku and Herndon. But Herndon is your two I like. I like Rodgers and Stafford, even though Stafford may only throw 15 passes all season. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I just, Jalen Samuels, Ronald Jones, Edo Smith, Kareem Hunt, I get on board with all those guys. I, I, I really like this team. It's just nice, actually. Devonta, Devonta Freeman, Josh Jacobs, and then having all these like upside flyers, Rojo, Samuels, Eo Smith, those are all solid players. Right. And Hunt, too, late. Uh, and then the AJ Green pick was nice in the sixth round. I thought that was a solid value for sure. I did really well done by Wright, Ristinger, and uh, 
Lou Jetta. Is, is this where you would take, by the way, Lou Jetta, who is a former co-host of this show? Would you take AJ Green in the early six, knowing what we know? Yeah, I would actually. Even you know, given the, the especially you know, you have your other, especially if you're going with a receiver heavy strategy, right. you don't really need to worry about it all that much. They they do need a third quarterback and a third tight end. Right. I, mean, I feel like I don't I don't really feel like Traquan Smith and Jamison Crowder or even Kareem Hunt would have been game changers then. But I felt like um, hashtag. Yeah, I, I felt like if they had taken Herndon or Herndon and Waller at the 13-14 turn or, or, or some of the quarterbacks, like Golf and Mariota, that's different. Anyway, we're getting thrown on time. Fantasydata.com's Eric Moody, final pick uh, of the night here at the 12th spot. Dalvin Cook, Lamar Miller, Royce Freeman, Peyton Barber, Alexander Madison, Juju Smith-Schuster, Stephon Diggs, Chris Godwin, Will Fuller, Dante Moncrief, Sean Hamilton. Uh, tight ends are Trey Burton and Greg Olson. Uh, quarterbacks are Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen. He also has the Jags defense. So this is the classic. I haven't said this yet tonight. I, I, at least I don't think I have. This is a classic team. Like the construction. Don't love the, a lot of the players here. I'm not a Lamar Miller guy, I, I guess, you know, especially where he got him here. Definitely not a Will Fuller guy. I don't know how comfortable I am with Greg Olson as my backup tight end. Um, you know, Peyton Barber, I guess, is okay value in the 12th. He does lock up the, the Vikings backfield with, with Cook and Madison, but Dante Moncrief leaves a, a bad taste in, in my mouth. Does, and, and Deshaun Hamilton is okay in the 16th. He has Juju, so he gets Moncrief. And then he, I think I like he screwed it up by like taking James, de- James defense when he could have had James Washington. You could have Juju, oh, you just Moncrief, lock up. And, okay. and James Washington. Why didn't you do that? Right. Anyway. Unless he thought, like, okay, well, here we go with with the with the defense run. This you know yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I mean sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So that's my complaint about this team. Two quarterbacks. Three quarterbacks. Same old thing. Yeah. yeah. It, indeed. So I well, mean. Well, that, I like it better than you, I think. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't hate it. And that's. I mean, I think it's a competitive team. I really like the receivers. I think the running back depth is actually a little bit better than you kind of are. I think sometimes in best ball drafts, team construction is, it, it can be more important than a 20 round, um, you know, team uh, league with waivers. I think construction is, if if you, you hit the construction right, that can save you on, on missing some players. In my personal opinion, doing these pros versus Joe's drafts over the years, that's that's what I felt like. All right, uh, I want to thank our uh, guest tonight, Bob Harris, uh, Josh Hornsby, Chad Schroeder, all for chiming in. Certainly appreciate that. And hopefully it helped Victor in Richmond uh, with, with his squad this year for his uh, dynasty startup here. I want to thank Darren Armani, the godfather of the pros versus Joe's, the guy who puts this all together every year. We couldn't do this without him. And all that great ADP data that I referenced year-round here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is all due to his website, fantasymojo.com. I want to thank the FFPC, Dave Gerzak. Uh, for all his hard work over the last couple of weeks doing pros versus Joe's. I want to thank our producer and mutual friend, Rob, our audio engineer and best friend, Bryce, and most of all, all of our listeners that tuned in to watch all this great drafting action over the course of the last two weeks. What's that? I can't hear you. You want more? You got more. What? Friday night, 9, 8 central, we are going to broadcast a Football Guys Players Championship live on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. And what's different this time? There's um, money involved. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you, can, entry fee. you can make a case that there's money involved in this. But, yes, there is a, this is a $350 contest uh, to enter. The winner is going to get a $250,000 grand prize. That is what we're going to be covering Friday night for two hours at 9, 8 Central. Uh, a lot of former guests on the show uh, will be participating. Just to give you the full rundown, Adam Krautwurst, Emerson Rammel, Tony Pung, John Terry, Joseph Paparzicki, uh, Tony Giustiniani, Donald Risch, Frank Imbornoni, Vince Staffolino, Hud- uh, yes, Hudson Curtin Reeve. Uh, another Italian, Biplab Mandel, who's going to be uh, on the on the program <laughs> drafting. Kurt Kikas, our Italian wine expert, and then Jimmy Wagner, also drafting on the program. That is all coming up at nine eight Central Bip on Lab Friday night. Yes, uh, Bip, yeah, you wouldn't have thunk it. <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was Norwegian, but I guess I was wrong. So yeah, me too. I thought, he was, I thought he was Irish. Make your Planet Hollywood reservations now. Sign up for that FFPC main event. Try to win that $500,000 grand prize in a $3.1 million prize pool. Remember, if your team's paid off by August 13th, which is coming up in two weeks, you will get your early draft slot by August 15th to know exactly where your draft is going Satellites, fast balls, classics, dynasties, super flexes, all going on. MyFFPC.com. Check that out. We got football guys coming on tonight. So please officially start now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. 
Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. We're on the team floor, even more so if we on tour. Me and E explore the country, wondering about the evening before. Trying to explain where the time went. Well, other rappers find a studio to grind in. You know, I don't know at what point we changed the channel here in the studio, but we had we had airplane on. Look, man. No, hold on. I'm not I'm not accusing you of anything. We had airplane on, followed by airplane two, which I was very excited about. I, I tend to watch shows while I'm watching the draft board and talking during these broadcasts. And airplane two was on. I didn't realize this. The actor that played Dean Vernon Wormer from Animal House played a doctor. In Airplane 2. Did yeah, you but, notice that? I, you know, I had forgotten about it, but now that you mentioned it, that, that, that makes sense. I had no idea. That's and, great. And, and then um, I, I, uh, I was watching, and then all of a sudden I see Chad Schroeder's calling, and I had, I'm like, oh, I got, I, I'd rather talk to Chad Schroeder than <laughs> watch Steve Vernon Warmer. But still uh, very entertaining. Hopefully, everyone was all entertained with our Pros versus Joe's broadcast this year. Uh, always such a thrill to do these uh, for you uh, each and every year, and we look forward to doing another Football Guys draft for you live 9, 8 central on Friday, Dave. I'm not even burnt out yet. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, I could uh, use a couple of days break. <laughs> or another white claw. Have another white claw. Pop it open and drive on out. Ah, all right. Uh, it's just like the 60s. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour does not <laughs> represent the opinions and... It's uh, like in the movie The Porkies. Is that what they did? Yeah, they all drive around. They were drinking white claws back then? No, they weren't. They weren't turning Dizzy's to Wizzy's. Dizzy's to Wizzy's. <laughs> Dizzy's to Wizzy's to Wizzy's. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you Friday night. Uh, enjoy your next couple of days.